I almost didn't do the webcam tonight because I just, I wasn't feeling it. But then I'm thought, you know, it's like, it'll take like five seconds to set up, you know, might as well just do it, right? So I did it. I have to say though, streaming without the headphones is so weird. But uh, anyway, yes, welcome everyone to the second worst show I make. We'll be getting back to Sacking Maleternal at some point in time. Don't ask me when. Um, don't ask me when, but we'll be getting back to it. Don't, don't you worry. At some point, I will read every anime on this website because I'm crazy. Uh, but yes, uh, so I guess we should just start with the central topic, which is recently Kaguya-sama Love is War Season 3 has surpassed Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood as the top uh, uh, ranked anime on Mal's list of uh, all time. And Kaguya is not the first anime to pass FMA. Uh, this, this isn't anything new. Animes pass FMA all the time, um, but this one has been going around, has been going on for longer than most series stay above FMA, so I guess we're going to see how long this sticks, um, be, because normally once a series passes FMA, it gets kicked off immediately, but uh, like I remember like this season of Gintama passed it, uh, Attack on Titan season three part two passed it. I think and I think this Gintama also passed it at one point. Um, stop. Okay. Jesus. Um, I think this Gintama passed it at one point. Uh, I don't remember if March comes in like a lion passed it, but I'm pretty sure Kono Katachi passed it at some point. Like it gets. Uh, this one was on uh, uh, Wari Monogatari was. Uh, on the verge of passing it. Kimi no Nawa was pretty close at one point, if it didn't already. Like, anime either get close to passing FMA, or they pass FMA all the time. This is not common, this isn't new, um, but what usually happens is that whenever an anime surpasses Full Metal Alchemist, what happens is that it gets a crazy amount of downvotes, Look at that, 67,117. Uh, uh, this is like season four of Gintama. This is like episode like 500, all right? Like I'm not the biggest Gintama fan, but th th this is crazy. There's like targeted downvotes towards series whenever they surpass FMA. And you see a lot of like ones doing that on a lot of minor shows. But when you look at the really big top shows, it is a like 2.3%, it is a sizable increase, whereas it tapers down from here. Like, with a highly rated show, this is the ideal taper line. But yeah, it, it's a well-known thing. People know this, people talk about doing this, so this isn't me just like pulling this out of my ass, uh, about series, when they approach Full Metal Alchemist, especially on Mal, a lot of Full Metal Alchemist fans will do massive down votes on whatever is approaching or has surpassed FMA up until the point where FMA goes back on top. And that is how Full Metal Alchemist has stayed on top for so long. In full reality, without these downvote campaigns, Full Metal Alchemist would not be the top anime, and it most certainly has not deserved to be the top anime for quite a long time. It would still be pretty highly rated, I'm sure, but it would be more like in the 20 zone because so much has surpassed it. Like, something surpasses Full Metal Alchemist basically every season. <laughs> um, or at, at le It happens at least two to three times every year, so it's not... It's not, uh, uh, by any metric, a new concept. Welcome, mate. How are you doing tonight? So, yeah. Now, I haven't seen Kaguya-sama Season 3. Do I think it's better than Full Metal Alchemist? Do I think there is a chance it could be better than Brotherhood? The answer is I have read the manga, and I do think there is a chance it might actually just be better 
um, like fan reception and crazy bullshit aside, uh, especially because the Kaguya-sama anime takes the source material in the manga, which uh, if I'm pretty sure I know what season three is adapting, and it's like the best part of the whole manga, right? But the anime takes what is in the manga and it elevates it to an even higher level. So is Kaguya season three better than FMA? Probably. I mean, if we're being honest, there's a good chance of that. But FMA basically stands on the top for three central reasons. Number one, it's a starter anime. Um, it's, it's an anime that a lot of people are most likely to either stumble upon because of its popularity or be recommended by a friend. Uh, it, it's just how people start FMA, right? Like, it'll start anime. A lot of people will either start FMA or they'll get into FMA really quickly. Uh, and, and so, obviously, that leads to a large number of people. Uh, I doubt it. Kaguya gets worse as it goes on. No, no, no. This is season three. So this is adapting basically the best parts of the manga. Um, it goes a bit downhill from where I believe season three probably ends, but not downhill. Like, it, it, Kaguya never gets bad in the manga, uh, but what is being adapted in season three is as far as I'm aware, probably the best part of the entire manga. So it genuinely, because the anime does better than the manga, like it is an improvement upon it, I the idea of it being better than Brotherhood would not surprise me in the slightest. But yeah, great starter anime, uh, FMA. You're probably going to stumble upon it. If not your first anime, one of your first animes. It'll probably be like, hey, I watched JJK. What else can I watch? And your friend will be like, check out Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. That's why when you look at the members, it's got like almost 3 million members. Obviously, we talked about like fake accounts voting it up and stuff. So not all of that would be legitimate. But needless to say, FMA, very popular starter choice. Number two, as far as starter anime goes... It's so there, there's a lot of eyes on it. When you're starting anime, you're more likely to vote things higher than when you're in your later career. When you look at people who have seen thousands upon thousands of animes, their scores tend to hover in the six to five to four range because you just seen so much crap that you start devaluing everything by so so like high ratings are a are a young man's game basically. I finished my Sunakaka, bought some clothes. Then there's those pants I bought. You are, yep, I read your pants uh, thing. Recommend all my friends start with Violence Jack Evil Town. I'm supposed to say don't start by watching Violence Jack the Evil Town. I didn't really like Kaguya Season 2. Really? I liked Season 2. Um, but yeah, so as far as starter anime, point number two is that Brotherhood is a remake of an older anime, basically, uh, that's designed to follow closer to the manga. So it has tighter writing. Like, it has the power of foresight that a lot of starter anime don't. So they really, like, they, they tighten up the writings, uh, uh, and uh, it's just like a cleaner watch than a lot of other starter anime, than, say, like a Naruto or a My Hero or something. Um, so, not only is it a good starter, so a lot of eyes are on it, but as far as starters go, it's probably towards the top of just pure starter anime. I'd watch season three, but I'd rather watch more 80s bullshit. Uh, also, I have a bunch of Haikyuu I still haven't watched. I hear Haikyuu is pretty good. Uh, and of course, point three is the downvote campaigns created by the Brotherhood. Like, those are the three main reasons... Uh, uh, Brotherhood has stayed on top and it genuinely did not deserve to be on top for as long as it did. It, what should have happened is excuse me, an anime should have passed Brotherhood and then it should have just kept dropping down the ratings, but... <laughs> But it didn't because of the downvote campaigns. So I'm glad Kaguya surpassed it. Um, is Kaguya probably from a pure... Uh, can, can I make a suggestion for Spoopy Month? Uh, absolutely, you can make a suggestion, Pache. I don't necessarily guarantee that I will play it, but you can certainly make the suggestion. The suggestions are always accepted. Always welcome, I should say. I give Season 1 an 8 and Season 2 a 6. 6 ain't a bad score, I'll say that. But, yeah, um, so I'm glad Kaguya surpassed it. What I hope happens is that Kaguya stays on top of Full Metal Alchemist, and I hope that something surpassing Brotherhood successfully and 
hopefully staying on top of Brotherhood will discourage the downvote campaigns from the Brotherhood fandom. And I hope that just over time, it'll naturally sink lower in the ratings to a more appropriate score for itself. Because, like like I said, people are... I have nothing against Brotherhood. I do like Brotherhood as an anime. See, I gave it a 7, which is a decent rating for me, if anyone has ever watched my, like, anime videos. But it did not deserve the top slot because it was on there artificially. It was like, well, like when, like, Nuxtaku tried to, like, raise interspecies reviewers to the top slot. It's just artificial ratings. That's the only reason it's been on there. And I, hopefully, that'll stop now that something has overtaken it. And hopefully we're not just replacing one evil with another. Hopefully Kaguya doesn't become the new Brotherhood and everyone fights to keep Kaguya on top. Hopefully the ratings start to fluctuate and become more legitimate. That's my hope. My hope is that Brotherhood sinks back down and maybe ho this is crazy and will never happen. But what I hope to happen is that the series that got victimized by the Brotherhood fandom, like Gintama, like Shingeki no Kyojin, um, like, uh, uh, like, like Kono Katachi, um, Your Name, Awari Monogatari, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it happened to Kimitsu no Yaiba, uh, like, the series that got taken down by the fandom, hopefully they can rise back up to their more appropriate levels, surpassing Brotherhood, but that will not happen, uh, because once an anime is old, no one gives a shit about it anymore, but that's what my ideal scenario would be, and honestly, no way Brotherhood sinks out of, like, the top 50 or anything. Like I said, probably probably see it around the 20s, maybe 30s at the most. Like, you're still going to see it in the top rankings. If if the, the downvote campaigns are over, you're still going to see it towards the top. But hopefully Kaguya has buried it, and hopefully we're not just replacing the, like, problematic Full Metal Alchemist fandom with a problematic Kaguya fandom. But... There we go. That's that's my two cents on the uh, Kaguya surpassing Brotherhood uh, uh, thing. Speaking of violence, Jack, Discotech Media is releasing Violence Jack uh, fully uncut for the first time in 30 years. I'll probably buy just because Violence Jack uncut was like mythical, mysterious VHS that was spoken of but not seen and some believe never existed. All right. See what you got here, Pache. This is Madison. This... Uh, video game may contain content not appropriate for all ages, may potentially trigger seizures for people with photosensitive epilepsy. Viewer discretion is devised. Let's see, gonna put in, I'm gonna put in a fake birthday. Um, because who cares? Uh, ho we're not gonna see tits on screen, right? <laughs> Um, let's see. Medicine is a first-person psychological horror game that delivers an immersive and terrifying experience with the help of an instant camera. Connect the human world with the beyond, take pictures, develop them by yourself, solve puzzles, explore your surroundings, and most importantly, survive. The thing I'm seeing about this right off-handedly that's a little off-putting is this is a very high price point, especially for a horror game. Uh, especially because I already have a bunch of horror games locked and loaded and ready to play. Um, there are some zombie tits in gore, but nothing sexual. I'm not really worried about tits or gore. I'm worried about the tits appearing on the stream when I'm not playing the game. Like, I'm worried about trailer tits more than I'm worried about, uh... More than I'm worried about game tits. It, Twitch is weird. As long as the tits are in the game, I'm okay. But if the tits are in, like... If it's, like... I'm looking at a video and then the video has tits, then I'm, then I'm up shit creek. So, um, so, okay, it, it, it seems like a sort of first part, so this seems like a pretty typical horror game. Possessed Camera DLC. What exactly is this DLC? Oh, it's a skin packs for your camera. Okay. All right, fair enough. Um, let's see. Da, da, da. Madison is a first-person psychological horror game featuring disturbing gameplay and unsettling, compelling narrative. What would you do if you woke up locked in a dark room? What the shit was that sound? What would you do if you woke up locked in a dark room with your hands covered in blood? Play as Luca and endure the brutal torture of Madison. Uh... Mad eye son, perhaps. 
Uh, a demon that was forced uh, him to continue a gory ritual started decades ago, making him commit abominable acts. Will he be able to finish this sinister ceremony? Every character in Madison has a disturbing story that blends seamlessly into the main narrative. Watch every step you make and be careful not to attract unwanted attention. You won't be alone. Use the camera, instant camera, to survive this torture or dive deeper into it. Develop the photos you take manually and face the fear of unveiling the truth. Search everything, pick up elements, interact with them to survive entities. Randomly activated events and changing puzzles throughout the game assures a higher level of replayability. Get lost in the immersive, terrifying experience thanks to high-quality visuals and 3D sounds. Listen, links to all our social media and Discord servers are available on our website. Feel free to follow us. Yeah, this is giving me, like, real, like, PT vibes or sort of, um... Uh, God, what's that, what's that, uh, what's that Indonesian horror game? Uh, Dread Out, Dread Out vibes. Um, let's see, do I meet the system requirements? Uh, <laughs> just barely. Um, I, what, what is bringing this to your attention? I'm not really seeing anything that's standing out about it bloodiest games what have they made they've made this that's not a great pedigree god damn it okay then i've been kicked out <laughs> Uh, what, what, what is, what brought that to your attention? Why, why, sell me on this. What? Um, all right, we might as well just go through this. Uh, how big is this? This is summer season, so it's a pretty small season, right? Yeah, it's pretty, you played a bit and found it interesting. I don't know. It, it, the, it didn't really grab me. Um... It didn't really grab me, and it seems a little pricey at the time being. So I'm not I'm not sure about that. It creates a good atmosphere. Hmm. I don't know. Maybe I'll look more into it. I don't want to. I don't want to promise anything one way or the other. There is like one slot I think left for horror month. So um, let's see. Hadarako Mao Sama, The Devil is a Part Timer, second season. Um, second season of Hadarako Mao Sama. Uh, but I, I will, I, I mean, I, I do appreciate the recommendation. Um, I'm not super interested. I'm going, I'll just be straight up. I'm not super interested. Um, maybe I'll look more into it. Maybe I'll like watch the trailer itself instead of just flipping through the images, but. What I what I saw wasn't super interesting currently. Yamawari, specifically the second one. I'd have to start with the first one. I've looked at Yamawari before too. Um, it hasn't specifically. It, it's another one of those where it's like I I get the suggestion, but I look at it, but I'm not super into the idea either. I I won't say never. Um, we're just gonna read. This whole description, striking fear into the hearts of mortals, the demon lord Satan begins to conquer the land of Ente Elsa, I Isla, with his vast demon armies. However, while embarking on this brutal quest to take over the continent, his efforts are foiled by the hero Amelia, forcing Satan to make a swift retreat through a dimensional portal, only to land in the human world. Along with his loyal general Alseal, the demon finds himself stranded in the modern-day Tokyo and vows to return and complete his subjugation of Ente Elsa. Isla. Excuse me. If I recall, the pronunciation of that is really awkward. Uh, that is, if they can find a way back. Powerless in a world without magic, Satan assumes the guise of a human named Sado Mao. Which is the subtlest name possible. Uh, and begins working at Mig Ronald's, a local fast food restaurant, to make ends meet. He soon realizes his goal of conquering Aunt Elsa Isla is uh, not enough as he grows determined to climb the corporate ladder and become the ruler of Earth, one satisfied customer at a time. Whether it's part-time work, household chores, or simply trying to pay the rent on time, Hadaraku Mao-sama presents a hilarious view of the most mundane aspects of everyday life, all through the eyes of a hapless demon lord. This anime came out in 2013, 
and that was probably right around when I saw it, and I cannot believe <laughs> that almost 10 years later, they're making a season 2 to this. They play almost exactly the same. The first game has some really uh, stupid shit, and the second game gets rid of it, like saving the damn game. Uh, is it as bad? Uh, is it bad? I remember the abridged parody more than the actual show. It's it's hard to say. It feels foreign coming out of a person's mouth. Uh, Kanjo Okura Shimasu second season. This is Rent a Girlfriend season two. I have heard that Rent a Girlfriend is good at the start and then very, very quickly goes downhill and does not stop plummeting once it starts going downhill. From what I've heard, Rent a Girlfriend goes like this. Do and then for a brief second, like, hold on, I don't have enough arm to go what I've heard this show goes. And then briefly it goes, and then it goes. <laughs> that is what I have heard Rent a Girlfriend functions like. Um, if I'm still invested in season after season one, we'll move on. Overlord, epi uh, season four. This is the fourth season of Overlord. At this point, I'm pretty sure I've reviewed every season of Overlord, and it's always the same thing. It's always the same thing. Let's be honest, I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna review it at some point. I finally, by the way, here's a proud, everyone, round of applause for me. I finally finished every anime I made, I, I chose to watch from Sacking Mal back in 2019. So everyone, round of applause. I finally finished my 2019 list. Woo! Moving on to 2020 already. Uh, I like Devil is a Part-Timer, but, uh, like, I'd be quicker to quote and recall stuff that happens in the parody. I remember a lot of key visuals from it, although I think it borrowed a bit from Beelzebub. Um, but yeah, uh, Overlord is an okay show. It's very overhyped. I think it was actually better in its early seasons, and I think it's gradually gone downhill. I wouldn't be shocked if I liked this season even less than I liked season three, to be honest. But I'll, I'll give it a watch just because, uh, because I'm committed now at this point. Um, Made in Abyss, uh, Retsu Jitsu no Ogon Kyo. Made in Abyss, the golden city of the scorching sun. I wanted to, directly after the events of Made in Abyss, moving three, Dawn of the Deep Soul, the fifth installment. The fifth installment? Oh, I have missed so much Made in Abyss, apparently. Um... <laughs> The fifth installment of Made in Abyss covers the adventures of Reg and Raiko and Nanachi in the sixth layer, the capital of the unreturned. I'm going to be honest. Uh, I reviewed the... I wanted to read the manga. I reviewed the original Made in the Abyss anime, and I did not enjoy it that much. Uh, it was very overhyped. Apparently I gave it a seven, so I guess I'm wrong. I did like it, but it was very overhyped, and I really lost basically all of my interest in the series at this point, so I actually have no intention of watching any of the other Made in Abysses. Uh, let's see, like this. Hey, Emmy, I got a new tea set. I was thinking me and you could have a tea uh, plushy party with dildos. I can't think of a single quote from the show itself. To be honest, if you'd ask me to quote most shows, though, I don't think I could. Um, Yukoso Jitsu... Ryoku Shijo Shuge no Kyo Shitsu A Kyo Shogi no Kyo Shitsu A. Um, I saw Maiden Abyss game once. Sequel to uh, Classroom of the Elite Season 1. So, weird thing about Classroom of the Elite. Weirdest thing about Classroom of the Elite. I'm not actually super surprised that this got a Season 2. This came out in 2017. I did a sacking mal on it and said it sounded stupid and that I didn't want to watch it. And then, uh, about a few years ago, probably about two, three years ago, people started talking about this show and are like, man, people really slept on this show when it came out. And I'm like, what? What? What are they talking about? And slowly but surely, I have seen more people talking about how good Classroom of the Elite was. And there's like, this became this whole movement about, man, Classroom of the Elite is really good. It's a shame they're never going to make another season. So I'm not surprised that the fan fervor got so heavy that they decided to just make a new season. 
Um, because people were really kicking up a storm about how this is apparently an underrated show. So this got me interested in season one, and which I hear was a bit of a botch job. Um, so if I enjoy season one, maybe I'll move on to season two. But for now, we're gonna we're gonna cut out on that. Okay, this is Yo Fukashi no Uta, Call of the Night. My friend was just shit talking the show a few days ago. Really? Uh, let's see. Ko Yamori seems like a typical middle school student on the surface. Relatively good at studies and amiable with his classmates, he puts a lot of effort into maintaining this facade. One day, however, he decides to stop pretending and quit school, developing insomnia as a result of having no daytime outlet for his energy. When wa taking walks alone at night, he feels marginally better, though he is aware that his inability to sleep should be considered a serious problem. Dog, you and me both, brother. Uh, on such a walk, Ko meets a weird girl, Nazuna Nakusa. Nope. Nanakusa, who diagnoses the cause of his sleeplessness. Despite making changes in his life, he's still holding uh, himself back from experiencing true freedom. She says that he won't be able to sleep unless he's satisfied with how he spends his waking hours. When it appears that she's resolved his current worries, Nazuna uh, invites him back to her apartment to share her futon. After a while, unaware that he is only feigning unconsciousness, she leans over him and bites his neck. I saw the trailer for this, and it didn't sound that interesting to be honest but it is a vampire romance um what's this is an adaption of a manga how well received is the manga oh apparently apparently the manga caught my attention at one point okay well hell <laughs> if the manga caught my attention then so did the anime <laughs> problem solved um, okay, it fucking, do I have to read this? Fine, I'll read it. <laughs> Dungeon ne, uh, <laughs> Dae wo motumero no wa machigateru daruka for shin shou make you hen. <laughs> Is it wrong to pick up <laughs> girls in a dungeon for? Uh, or just Don Mashi <laughs> season four uh, to any sane human. Um, <laughs> Intrepid adventure Brel Cranel has leveled up, but he can't rest on his dungeoneering laurels just yet. The Hestia Familia still has a long way to go before it can stand toe to toe with the other familiars, uh, such as Orario. But before Bell can set out on his next mission, reports of the brutal murder rock adventuring community. One of Bell's most trusted allies stands accused of the horrible crime, and it's up to Bell and his friends to clear their name and uncover a nevarious plot brewing in the dungeon's dark depths. One watch one season of that, uh, and that was it. So, season one of Don Machi is super boring. It's super boring, honestly. But I grew an appreciation for season one over time because it does something that you don't see a lot in adventure stories, which shows you the everyday, everyday like minutia of how boring a being an adventurer would be if you're just grinding the easy zones. Like you see him walk up, easily murder a group of <laughs> enemies, and then he has to like pick the exploded money off the ground. It, like, it uses his boredom to its own benefit. I don't think it was intentional, but it works for season one. Season two is better. I have not seen season three. It's on my list. Season two improves on basically everything season one did wrong. But what is surprising of this show is that it has a spinoff based around th uh, the character of Eyes Wallenstein. Um, who is not listed as one of the main characters, unfortunately. That would have been more convenient for me. If she was, yeah. So it's based off of the character of Eyes Wallenstein, who in season one is the most boring character in the entire show. She is so goddamn boring. And see, there's a spinoff based entirely around her, and it is legitimately one of the best... <laughs> legitimately one of the best anime in the year it came out, um, which was uh, Sword Oratoria, uh, which was uh, 2017. Uh, be and it really won me over on Eyes, the spinoff did, because I realized the secret of Eyes Wellenstein is that she is the only normal character in a world filled with anime characters. She is just a normal person. 
So she comes off really, like, dumb and dim-witted <laughs> in season one because you're seen from Belle's perspective. But the second it switches to her perspective, you see from her perspective that everyone around her is acting like a lunatic 24-7. So of course she's confused and doesn't understand them. She's a normal person. <laughs> It's actually great. Season two is great, but the ending to uh, her spinoff series is poo-poo. What a bad ending to that season. Um, but if, but as long as you're not looking for a satisfying ending, uh, absolutely, absolutely worth watching. Just, just, just botches its execution hardcore though. But what I will say about it is if we go to my favorite anime characters list you will see bum ba da bum sitting here at number 18 we have loki from don machi because i love loki so goddamn much holy shit i love loki uh so yeah chances are i'll probably watch this season anyway but we'll see how bad season three is how about that Hmm. Good old liquid water. Uh, mama, haha, ha, no suruago ga moto kano data. My stepmom's daughter is my ex. I actually have heard this is good, but I am not very interested in the premise. Um, a certain boy and girl in middle school became lovers, flirted with each other, disagreed on trivial things, became more frequently irritated with each other rather than excited, and ended up breaking up at graduation. And so the two of them, Mitsu, uh, Mizuto Irido and Yume Ayai? Ayai? What a weird name. Wailed up meeting each other in the most unexpected fashion. Isn't it obvious that I'm the elder brother? Isn't it obvious that I'm the elder sister? The children of the partner of their parents' remarriage were ex-lovers? Okay, honestly, it would be very easy to figure out who's the older brother and who's the older sister. Which one is older? <laughs> it would be so easy to figure out who had a birthday first. The former couple, mindful of their parents' feelings, decide on a sibling rule, where the one who becomes conscious of the other as the opposite sex loses. But when they encounter each other in the bathroom, commute to and from school together, along with memories of the past and living under the same roof, just how do they disregard each other? I know I like trash, and I've actually heard this is pretty good, but the premise just does not appeal to me. So I will be, what's this? Skipping it. Are you kidding? A romance? Me? Well, it happens sometimes. Yeah, there's this, like, stepsister fetish thing that everyone's super gaga about. Um, I'm sorry about the sigh. I read the title and realized I was gonna have to say this out loud. Okay, Tensei Kenja no Isekai Life Dai to no Shoku Gyo wo Ete Sekai Saikyo ne sorry, ne uh, Narimashita. Fuck off and die. My isekai life. I gained a second character class and became the strongest sage in the world. Uh, Yuji Sano, a black company employee, is summoned to another world while finishing his work at home. His profession in the other world, a magical monster tamer, is considered a job that makes it difficult to become an adventurer. However, really? I... <laughs> If we're being realistic, Monster Tamer is literally the best job for an adventurer. You just sit back and do nothing. <laughs> it's like playing, like, old Ranger WoW. Um, however, thanks to some slimes he met, which read several magical books, he gained magical powers and a second profession. Sage! Yuji acquired overwhelming power, but he is conscious of his strength, blindly becoming unparalleled and the strongest in the world. What a dumb shit plotline. Huh. When will Isekai die out? Never. It's a genre now. But, yeah, wow, what a... Huh. I'm gonna say something crazy. I'm not... I don't think I'm feeling this one. I don't think I'm feeling this one. It's just like... We got a strong guy and a but look, we've got one slime, two slime, three slime, four slime, five slime, six slime. I bet these slimes are main characters, 
and I pr they're probably going to just be obnoxious... Like, I can tell they're probably just obnoxious mascot characters. This is going to sound crazy, because I normally watch every single isekai, and apparently it's, like, my fifth favorite anime genre of all time. Um, but, like... Wow, I don't give a shit about this. I'm I know, I know, crazy. I don't I don't care. I do not care. Um the glow from this woman's hand. Uh oh, I was going to say she looks fat, but no, she she doesn't she is fat. Okay, cool. Awesome. Fair enough. Um okay, Isekai make you de harem wo. Is Isekai now the equivalent to those horror movies that uh, pretended to be horror but were just softcore porn? No, there's legitimate Isekais out there still. It's the Isekai. You can't think of Isekai as a trend. Um, isekai has sort of it, it's. You you're too young to remember this, but uh, back during the Moe boom, uh, people thought that the Moe boom was a trend. Uh, and you could probably make an argument, this is before I was, I, 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 this, this was before I was around, um, but probably you could make this a very similar argument, like, back in the 80s, during the, um, during the Super Robo Boom, also. But yeah, like, it periodically happens where an explosion happens in the anime community, and instead of dying out like people think it will, because anime doesn't go through trends, it, it's a genre, it's a medium that self-cannibalizes itself aggressively. Um, what the hell just came out of me? Um, yeah, it, anime self, Super Robo was 70s, <laughs> Super Robo was about mid-70s to mid-80s, that shit did not die. <laughs> Super Robo did not ever stop. You, I was always under the impression that Super Robo died with Gundam, which was 79, no. In fact, I would say that the last dying gasps of Super Robo were worse than when it was starting. Like, like, uh, like when Super Robo was starting in, like, the 70s and, like, pushing into the 80s, you'd assume that as it gets to the end of its life cycle, it would slowly die out. No. there In the, like, early 80s, there was an explosion of even more, like, uh, uh, derivative Super Robo bullshit. It just never ended. Because what you have to keep in mind is that despite Gundam being considered the progenitor of real Robo... Uh, Gundam was not popular when it was released. So even, so Gundam, despite being a product of the Super Robo boom, w was not popular and did not influence a future real Robo boom. It was just part of the general, like, like, uh, uh zeitgeist at the time. So Super Robo was still popping off even post-Gundam. People talk about Devilman, but that shit, do but that doesn't have shit on Gynocyber. Uh, what about gore porn anime from the 80s? You don't see those anymore? You do, actually, though. You do. They come out constantly. Um, you don't see them done in the same style of... Uh, uh, you don't see them done in, like, the same style as you used to, but that's because anime as a culture has evolved past that. But, like, here, let's, let's go to... I bet I could pull at least a similar one from at least this year to last year. Like, a. Oh, actually, I probably couldn't, because I haven't been watching anime. But I guarantee you, I could find a, a shockingly, like, gore fetish anime with very minimal effort. Now, again, it's not the same style, but that's because anime as a medium has, uh, ha has moved past the sort of 80s style. But yeah, like, heavy, heavy gore porn anime isn't... It has been influenced into... I have to go very far back until I've actually reached a season I've seen. Here, 2019 is a lot easier. Um, I will say this. Uh, Sword Art had some had, had some shades of that a little bit. It wasn't, like, all the way there, but it, it, it clearly bled. What, what I'm trying to say is, like... <laughs> hold on. I will answer the gore porn question in a second. Let, uh, let me finish the thought before I lose it. What I was going to say was that once these booms happen, people assume that they die down, but they don't. Because anime is self 
cannibalizing and it just takes what was previously made and it just continues to build on them um and it starts to integrate Every anime that has come out post Moe Boom, even in the modern era, is just a product of the Moe Boom. Like, it never died down necessarily, it just became merged into the culture. Uh, and so, what we're looking at with the Isekai Boom is it will not stop. Um, it'll slow down. We'll see less and less Isekai, but Isekai has established itself as a genre of anime. And if history has told us anything, it will never go away. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need it to, because like any genre, it can be done well and it can be done poorly. Um, but it will never, it will never disappear. Uh, l uh, last gore porn anime I can think of was Helsing Ultimate. Um, but yeah, as far as like hyper violent like gore porn, it's died down a lot, um, for sure. But for uh, the more like. Um, but, like, uh, 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 like, the elements of it still exist in a lot of, like, mature... Here's the detail of gore I'm talking about. No, 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 no. What, it doesn't matter the level of detail of gore you're talking about. Um, because, because the elements from that period of time still exist in anime. A lot of anime just have, like, a bunch of blood. Like, um, here, so first off, uh, uh... It's not all the way there, and I wouldn't say it's 80s level, but Sword Art Online's, like, uh, War of Underworld season can get can get pretty uh, gory. Not not 80s level, don't get me wrong, not 80s level. Um, but, like, the upcoming Chainsaw Man, probably coming in, like, the fall season or a bit later than that, they've specifically said they have no intention of, like, toning down the gore. Um, there's a lot of gore in, um, uh, like, Tokyo Ghoul. That, that very clearly took... Uh, in um, uh, influence from that time period. Uh, the, the amount of, like, violence portrayed during, like, the 80s OVA period, is it as gory as Elfin Lead? No. No, it is not. Uh, but Elfin Lead wasn't in the 80s either. Elfin Lead was, like, what, uh, 2003 or something? Like, El Elfin Lead was well past that time period, which is actually exactly my kind of point. It doesn't these booms don't ever die. They just... 2004, yeah. 2004, in fact. Um, these booms don't die. They just become part of anime as a culture. They they become integrated into, like, the everyday construction of the stories, the, the tropes, the archetypes. They just become genres in some cases, like Isekai or, like, Super Robo. Uh, so, yeah, I cannot see Isekai ever dying down, but... Uh, but it is also worth noting that the level of gore presented in uh, those 80s anime are mostly because those were OVAs, which allowed a level of gore that are not obtainable on TV, because Japanese media will censor that. So there is a sort of level of violence that is afforded to those OVAs that you would not be capable of presenting on a TV anime. And that's sort of why you see it sort of decline. Um, but for, like, uncensored DVD releases, it can get pretty messed up, obviously. Uh, I'm aware an Elfin Lead isn't as gory as something like Gyno Cyber. But yeah, that's the point I'm trying to make. <clears throat> Excuse me. The point I'm trying to make is that it doesn't die. Like, n none of the anime booms really die. They just slowly integrate themselves. Like, they, they create this, like, bubble that forces everything around it to conform, and then eventually the pressure from other anime in time just causes that to instead conform itself and become part of the greater anime culture. Um. Oh, yeah. I, well, I was trying to find uh, uh, heavier gore. I will say that, like, 2019's, like, Maho Shoujo site is definitely along those veins of, like, just bullshit 80s <laughs> hyper-violent nonsense, for example. Uh, let's see. I, d I don't think... I don't, because Sword Art does other things, so I don't want to just, like, dismiss it as, like, hyper-violent bullshit. Um, like, I don't want to devalue Sword Art by just saying, there, here's an example of hyper-violent bullshit. So I want to see if I can find you a little bit of a better example, but 
Oh yeah, you see a little bit of elements bleeding into One Punch Man also. Um, but yeah, a lot a lot of it is also just like limitations created by like TV and stuff. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Let's see, I'm trying to look for something. I'll have to do a video talking about 2019 anime. Oh, excuse me. So when I agreed to try and find one, I forgot a very important fact, which is that I basically just have to do every sacking mal I've already done, but in reverse. And yeah, elements bleed into Attack on Titan. Um, <laughs> I regret this. Uh, wholeheartedly because <laughs> this will take forever because I still have to read every entry to actually find one that fits uh, no let's <laughs> Miru tights there you go bum, bum, bum. but uh, yeah uh, I would also say blood C blood C is a good example but I don't know how long ago blood C was I overheard some comic fans uh, ranting today while I was out. Oh. Do I really have to find something? This is taking forever. <laughs> I demand permission to stop. <laughs> uh... Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Maho Shoujo Spec Ops actually very much d gets in that territory, but I don't... But it, you know, it only brushes up against it because it's a TV anime, though. I, I think the problem is I don't watch enough OVAs for this. But it definitely has those, like, 80s gore fest vibes at parts. Miru Tights has better commercial uh, for tights than, uh, for, for tights than most tights. They were ranting about manga killing comics. Oh, yes. Well, no. Comics sucking is killing comics. Make good comics. That's... Uh, come on, give me a bone. Give me some edge shit, please. Oh yeah, there, there's there's some in Made in Abyss, but I'm I'm looking for something that's just like unabashed at what it is. Apparently, they made a City Hunter movie in 2019. That's fun. Uh, can I filter this by genre or something? Can I filter this just by pure? levels of violence oh actually you know what goblin slayer goblin slayer straight up <laughs> i'm unabashedly willing to say goblin slayer is about as close to those like shitty old uh 80s like gore romps as you can get on a modern day tv anime Spain loves City Hunter. I did not know that. Who has higher standards, you or me? I think the question depends on what we're defining as standards. Um, because I think my barrier for entry on finding something watchable is a lot lower than yours. Uh, whereas I think in order to score higher, I think that's a higher barrier. Like, I'm more, I'm more easy to please, but a lot harder to satisfy, I will say. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'm reading this bullshit. Isekai make you uh, de harem well. Uh, harem in the labyrinth of another world. 
Uh, struggling with life and society, high school student Machio Kaga wanders about the internet and lands on an odd website. The website featuring a number of questions and a point-based system allows one to create skills and abilities for a character. Upon completing his character, Kaga was transported to a game-like fantasy world and reborn as a strong man who can claim idol-level girls. Thus begins the cheat and harem legend of a reborn man. All right, I don't want to say this. Because I don't have anything against chubby girls, but this girl is, let's be real, because the idol industry, <laughs> the idol industry is not a fan of chubby girls, and this girl is too chubby to be an idol. Alright, I'm just being real with you. I'm not saying I necessarily support the idol industry, I think everyone knows it's terrible, but I think we all know... <laughs> Uh, that the idol industry would not let that amount of weight fly on one of its idols. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, we know it's true, okay? All right? I'm not saying you can't be beautiful and chubby, but I'm saying you probably can't be a chubby idol. That's me. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying they probably will not let you. I'm saying they will probably refuse to hire you, is what I'm saying. <laughs> Okay. Excuse me. Engage Kiss. Veyron City, a mega-floating metropolis created from the discovery of a new energy source. Shu, a young man who owns and operates a small business in the area, leads a meager life due to the reckless spending. Kisara, a girl who visits Shu's office and home because she is constantly concerned about him. She works while attending high school in Veyron City, doing everything from clerical work to housework. Ayano, Shu's ex-girlfriend, and a senior colleague at the corporation he had previously worked for, is also worried about him. Thus begins the slapstick romantic comedy of three people in a slightly unusual relationship that takes place on an artificial island in the Pacific Ocean. Um, uh, I mean, if, like, if, uh, you saw a weird 50-minute single episode on OVA, uh, would you watch it just because? Because I have. That's how I found the dumb bullshit, like, Call Me Tonight and Dark Cat. Both suck, by the way. I would look at it to see if it's worth watching but where i am with the amount of anime let's be real here all right let's let's take a look at this for half a second the amount of anime i have on my plan to watch list does not support me randomly watching bullcrap for no reason anymore so if i saw it on youtube i would look at it and i do this Almost every single day, I will look at whatever random anime clip suggestion is suggested to me, and I will look at it, and I will see if it is worth watching, and if it is, I will throw it on the plan to watch list. So the answer is, kind of. I will not watch it immediately, because I have better things to do with my time, but I will probably look at it. Uh, so this is a comedy, and that's not what I would have guessed from... This poster. This poster makes it look like an action show, but this says romance comedy. I love the character design, by the way. Let me just say that. Oh, well, also while we're talking... Oh, and by floating, it meant in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. I thought it meant, like, floating in air. Uh, I will say this, though. I will legitimately say this. I have actually done this. Um, I watched iGirl... Actually, I take that back. I'm a liar. I do that all the time. <laughs> I thought about that more than not at all. I do do that all the time. I will just see an anime sitting next to another anime, and if it's short enough, I'll be like, yeah, I could watch this bullcrap. Why not? <laughs> that's that's why you get like reviews like iGirl and stuff, where I'm like, woo! 30 minute musical or is it 10 minutes i don't remember how long i girl was <laughs> don't mind if i do uh... i really like the character designs of this but my god does this plot this is not a plot this is not a plot like genuinely this is nothing Basically, talk to OP Destiny, Guilty Crown, and a bit of harem. Chance is of NTR. <laughs> I'm gonna go with none. Writer has a long history of putting cheating and infidelity in his work, so it's possible. And I'm out. Thank you, random mal commenter. Okay, Soridomo Ayumi wa 
Yose te ker... Hold on. I botched the execution. Uh, Yose te kuru. Yose te kuru. When will a Yumi make his move? On a whim, first year, a Yumu Tanaka quits the kendo club to join the illegitimate <laughs> shogi club. That's how you do it. Uh, Urushi uh, Yatome, the president of the club and a master of shogi, is thrilled to finally have a playing partner. As a Yumu's upperclassman, Urushi endeavors to be his shogi mentor and student role model. Too often, however, she finds herself blushing with embarrassment. Stone-faced and honest, Ayumi sees no issue with calling Urushi cute. Although Ayumi likes her, he refrains from confessing and promises himself to beat her in a game of shogi. Oh god, this sounds unbearable then. Though the school life in shogi games, the two students have many hilarious and heartwarming adventures. Ayumu enjoys every second with Urushi, but he's still a long way from beating her in shogi. With the commitment he made to himself, will Ayumi ever get his chance to confess his feelings to Urushu? The My Kaku anime is a great example of changing rules in uh, TV censorship and anime. Alright, you see this right here. See right th this right here? This is a red flag for <laughs> for all you romance uh, anime perspectives. This is, this is a red flag. Ayumi likes her. So he's already accepted it. He refrains from confessing and promises himself to first beat her in a game of shogi. The entire point about a romance is to watch the progressing relationship of the main cast. The second you create a situation where both characters like each other, but they're forbidden from ending up together through a completely controllable circumstance, you are building frustration into your romance. Like, if it's sort of like a star-crossed lovers kind of thing, like a Romeo and Juliet, you can make it work. But if the block in the relationship is the characters themselves, then you as an audience member are very likely to just get more frustrated as the series goes on. You'll just be screaming at your screen, just tell her how you feel, you dipshit. Um, so yeah, this... This is a red flag right here. So watch out for that. You are you're not going to have a good time with that, I'm willing to bet. Specifically with how the character Akemi dresses. Okay, Kinso no Vermail Gake Puchi Majutsushi wa Saikyo no Yukasai to Maho Sekai wo Suki Susumu, or Vilmil in gold, <laughs> which is a much, much better name. Is there a translate? There's no translation. This is just like, I can get parts of this, like, Saikyo no Maho Sekai wo Sukumusu, something, something, magical world, <laughs> magic. <laughs> Magic school, magic world bullshit. I can barely read this. Uh, Royal Ortega Magic Academy. Alto on the verge of failing uh, the summoning magic class and having to repeat the year, stumbles upon a grimoire and draws a magic circle, summoning the sealed demon Vermel and making her his familiar. This is the plot line of Familiar of Zero. Uh, she has uh, been a feared devil since ancient times and possesses tremendous power to cause disasters. This is the plot of Familiar of Zero. Vermel, as a familiar, necessitates magical energy on a daily basis, which she obtains from Alto via passionate, passionate kisses. This is familiar familiar of zero mixed with fate. All <laughs> Lilia, Alto's childhood friend, grows envious of the relationship while the students are taken back by the unprecedented familiar. The royal road fantasy of a magician on the edge of failure and an unhealthy devil sister begins. Okay, so this is about a dude who has a sister who is envious of the brother, who's super powerful but failing magic school, and so he summons a sexy MILF demon. Well, you had me at sexy MILF demon. <laughs> I'm so fucking predictable. Uh, the first half of the show, she dresses like this, which is how she dresses in the manga. She then spends the second half dressed like this. Familiar of Zero. Uh, I sh shout out to lesbian propagandist on Twitter, by the way. One of those is night clothes. 
Oh, I, I understand fully. I under Okay, I get what you're showing me. Uh, Familiar of Zero was a sort of like light novel series about the most obnoxious and abusive tsundere I have ever seen in anything, to the point where she borders on being a yandere. <laughs> Uh, 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 summoning, like, a dude from Earth to be her familiar, and her name's Zero, and she's been ostracized. I was reading the manga adaption, uh, and then the, uh, author died, so <laughs> that kind of put a damper on that problem, on that, but, um, yeah. It was, it was a mixed bag, if I'm being honest with you. Um, I, there, there was one scene I will remember, though, where... Like, this, like, wizard that the, I believe the main heroine really respected was, like, marrying this girl. And the main character, in order to save her, just burst through the window dramatically with a sword. And I never forgot that scene. Like, I, I, I re don't remember most of Familiar of Zero, but that scene where the main character heroically burst through a stained glass window to stop a wedding has stuck in my head forever. And I'm not gonna lie, I've ripped it off at several points. So... <laughs> And you can't make me stop. <laughs> Isekai Oji-san, uncle from another world. Uh, 17 years ago, Takafumi's uncle fell into a coma, but now he's back like a man risen from the grave. Soon Takafumi discovers two bizarre things. His uncle treasures video games above all else, and while comatose, he was actually transported to another world as some heroic guardian. Now, not only does Takafumi have to room with an uncle who is literally magical, he also has to catch the guy up on two decades of history. Smartphones, high-speed internet, modern anime traps, and the traumatic outcome of the 90s console war. Okay, so I've seen the trailer for this, by the way, and it actually looks good. Uh, so I'm actually sold, but not because of the description, but because I've seen the trailer and the trailer looked good. Shadow's House, season two. I almost certainly, this is the second season of Shadow's House, read the description of Shadow House and it didn't sound good at the time, and I'm still not interested in it. So moving on. I've heard it's good. I've heard it's good, but I do not care. Uh, La Croix Recoil. Uh, a Japanese cafe in Tokyo serving delicious coffee, super sweet treats, and more? From making local deliveries to chaperoning to getting rid of zombies and even fighting a giant monster. Whatever the problem, stop by for a consultation. No matter the order, leave it to us. Okay, that took a turn when you said giant monster. What is this? This is original? It has... No tags. It has no genres. It's A1, which is not a great studio, admittedly. We got cute girls in a cafe. What the fuck kind of plot is that? I don't know. And it's from Aniplex USA, which means that this is just a blur, but it's not a real description. So we know nothing about this. Said to be the strongest liqueur of all time, she enjoys solving private sector problems that the DA would not address. At Cafe uh, Lyco Ly Reco, she works joyfully and cheerfully as the self-proclaimed uh, poster girl. The only thing I can think of is this is basically Tokyo Mew Mew? Is this basically Tokyo... This sounds like this might be basically Tokyo Mew Mew. The guns sound like real ones without uh, and with silencer. It's not like as you're laying where the guns sound like laser guns. It's really good detail. The first episode was really cool to put you in the mood of the show. Okay, so yeah, this is this seems like a more mature like Tokyo Mew Mew kind of thing. Like the girls work at a cafe and then shit goes crazy and then they like they they I'm assuming transform or something and then they beat the shit out of the threats all while working in a cafe. I'm gonna be honest, this sounds pretty good. Drinking coffee. Oh shit, Kojira is back. Uh, Shingo Adachi. Why does that name actually sounds familiar? Shingo Adachi. What have you done? 
Bum 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 bum. Long history with um, A1 apparently. He directed this. He directed this. You know what? I'm going to try it. It actually sounds good. I'm going to try it. I'll watch girls make coffee and then fight Gojira. Uh, okay. Kamicho Musume to Sawagakari. The Yakuza's Guide to Babysitting. Okay, well, that just sounds adorable. I might as well just add... I don't even need to read this. I'm just going to add it. Uh, actually, I should check to make sure that this isn't a romance. Who's your Danny? Toro Kirishima is the right-hand man of Sakura guy, Sa Sakuragi crime family. For him, the job is a perfect excuse to let his violent instincts run wild, earning him the nickname the Demon of Sakuragi. It seems like nothing will stand in the way of his vicious nature, but then one day he receives an assignment like never before from the boss babysitting his daughter. This is the heartwarming, or is it blood-curdling, story of a little girl and her Yakuza caretaker. So, I gotta watch out for this, because sometimes you'll find a sort of, like, paternal anime, and then at the end, the dad fucks the daughter. Um, and n now I want to be clear about my position about this. I have nothing against like father daughter fantasies or like lowly content, but I want to be very clear. I personally am not into it. So <laughs> like, I, I don't have any problems with its existence, you know, different strokes for different folks and all that. But like the, the, the whole like paternal, relate like ro paternal romantic relationships are a major turnoff for me personally i i've i'm sure i've i've talked many times about how nothing turns me on turns me off faster than calling me daddy i just ugh, i hate it so ugh. so let's make sure that this is like a, a sort of like a genuinely heartwarming kind of thing and <laughs> not some weird lowly romance uh, it just says comedy and slice of life, so I'm sh we're probably safe. Uh, yeah, comedy slice of life. Okay, then yeah, all right. You know what? I'm gonna give this a shot then. You gotta you gotta watch that shit though. You gotta watch. You gotta you gotta check the tags before you jump in. All right, look before you leap, people. Because if you don't, it's it's you to blame. You got yourself on that one. Okay, Saikin Yatota. Maid Ga Ayashi, the maid I hired recently, is mysterious. So I believe this is actually from a web comic. Is this correct? This is from a manga. The beautiful maid Lilith has recently been hired to care for the whims of her employer's son, Yuri. However, Yuri's overzealous skepticism of her every action keeps him on edge as he suspects devious mischief being plotted behind his back. Despite his paranoia, Lilith grows fond of Yuri and often teases him as ways to further their bonding. Saiken, uh, Yatota made guy ayashi revolves around the relationship between the cautious yuri and his wonderfully charming maid in this day-to-day -day oddball romantic comedy um so okay what i will say about this is from what i have heard uh web manga rele uh, released on the author's twitter account since october 17th 2019 that's what i thought i thought it was a web comic um i saw the trailer to this and uh, from what I've heard, they do something really cool with this, which is that the main heroine, the maid, has like this really distinct eye color. And from what I have heard, and I have not read this series, from what I have heard, the entire comic is in black and white except for the maid's eyes, which adds this sort of like visual distinctness to her character. And honestly, that's really cool. And I love it when comics do shit like that. I think that's, I think the lack of color in uh, just genuinely like a lot of written work uh, really, really holds back um, writing as an art form, like both manga and um, uh, just general literature. There, there's a lot you could do with playing with like color in even like a novel, for example. Um, as long as you don't overdo it and, like, vomit rainbows onto a page. But one would imagine that a traditionally published book would put a stop to that. Uh, I think the major issue is actually, like, 
ink costs, I think, because colored ink is more expensive. I think that's at the actual main problem with it, but, um, yeah. Uh, so this is, I think, a Shota romance, is that correct? Yeah, this is like a Shota romance. I don't know about this. I am well aware that this is the exact opposite situation that I just said doesn't do it for me, for the record. Um, I think what I'm being lured into on this one, more than the romantic elements, that's not what's really appealing to me. I think what's getting me on this one is I like the maid's design, and I kind of want to see how the anime will handle that. But I'm not sure if that's a... Oh, you can actually see her eyes are really, like, sort of having this glowish pop to it right here. Um, but I'm not sure if that's enough to sell me on it, honestly. Like, do I really... Do I really want to watch a mysterious maid flirt around with a Shota? Like, is that what I want? Is that is that a goal of mine? Is that is that what I'm in the mood for? And the answer is probably not. Um, but I hear the manga's good... But I hear the manga's good on a trailer for the anime. It's a 701. I will say manga ratings are a lot more reasonable. You know what I think I'm going to do? Excuse me. I think I'm going to hold off on this one, actually. And then, if I hear... In the 7,000 years it takes me to actually get to 2022 anime, if I end up hearing good things about it, then maybe I'll check it out. But if it just fades into obscurity and no one talks about it, I probably won't. I will probably won't check it out. But you get your bag, dude. Good on you for 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 re releasing a comic on Twitter and then making an anime out of it. That's you're the only person I, I've ever heard of that does that. Um, okay, Kuro no Sho Kanashi, Black Summoner. Waking up in a strange new place with no memory of his past life, Kelvin learns that he's bartered away those very memories in exchange for powerful new abilities during his recent transmigration. Heading out into a whole new world as a summoner, with his first follower being the very goddess who brought him over. That's just ripping off Konosuba! <sighs> Kelvin. <laughs> and also Grimgar? Calvin begins his new life as an adventurer, and it isn't long before he discovers his hidden disposition as a battle junkie. From the Black Knight of the Ancient Castle of the Evil Spirits to the demon within the hidden cave of the Sage, he re revels in the fight against one formidable foe after another. Join this overpowered adventurer in an exhilarating and epic saga as he and his allies carve their way into the annals of history. This sounds terrible. It sounds like they ripped off Konosuba... <laughs> and Grimgar, and then was just like, now let's have him fight a bunch of people. That sounds so lazy. <laughs> Question. Revelations, Persona, or Innocent Sin? I want to play one, but I'm not sure which. I would definitely say Innocent Sin. That game is very good. And I also can't help but notice that this dude is also a summoner, like the one we just read about, and also he's got a cute little slime buddy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm, I'm very curious when this came out. Black Summoner was released in 2016. Hold on, let's go, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> this released this was released in 2018 i was wondering about that I, I, in that case i'm gonna go ahead and say that just based on premises there is a very good chance that fucking slime summoner sage man <laughs> ripped off black summoner there's a very good chance they even have the same design of slime <laughs> jesus christ Oh, we're going to be going through some growing pains. We're going to be going through some growing pains. A lot of ripoffs this season indeed. That's Hey, that's what happens when you end up on... Um, that's what happens when you uh, hit the summer season. Every, every, they save the good stuff for like winter and fall or... No, like spring, yeah, spring and fall are the major seasons for anime. No one gives a shit about the summer or, or uh, 
winter seasons. Thing with Innocent Sins, I have to do some extra shit if I want to play it on my TV. Also, I have no intention of playing Eternal Punishment afterwards, mostly because uh, Soul Hackers, also Eternal Punishment grind is painful. Uh, Tokyo Mew Mew New Heart. Uh, so it looks like they're redoing Tokyo Mew Mew. Um, I'm going to skip this, but only because I have to watch the original Tokyo Mew Mew at some point. So that's a thing I'm going to have to deal with at one point in my life. Uh, if I, if I get bit by the Tokyo Mew Mew bug, maybe I'll check it out. Also Eternal Punishment Grind. Well then go with P1 then. Sounds like you're leaning towards P1. That, that knocked the fucking wind out of me. Holy shit. Holy shit. When did the manga come out? It's gotta be like over 10 years, right? 2005. Oh my god. Holy shit, dude. Holy shit. They wait they waited so long. I never thought this would ever get an adaption. Oh my god, okay. Hoshi no Samidera, Lucifer and the Biscuit Hammer. One day, college student Yuhi Amamiya is approached by talking lizard Sir Noe Crezant. Crezant immediately launches into a fantastical story. The powerful mage Animus intends to destroy the Earth with his biscuit hammer, a huge contraption looming high in Earth's orbit. Earth's only hope lies with the princess and her beast knights, whose task is to protect the princess and defeat Animus. Uh, Yuhi is chosen as the Lizard Beast Knight, and despite his misgivings, is quickly forced to defend himself from a golem created by a mage. He's saved by his neighbor, the princess uh, Asahina Samidara, who, and swears loyalty to her. However, the princess does not intend to save the Earth at all. She lets Yuhi in on her real motivations, to prevent Animus from destroying the Earth, only to then annihilate the planet by her own hand. The pair continue to fight off attacks by Animus's golems, while the remaining Beast Knights are slowly being gathered and learning to use their powers. But Yuhi will have to decide for himself whether to go along with Asahina's plans, um, whom he's getting close to, or to save the Earth. In the process, he must also confront his true self and determine where his loyalties truly lie. Uh, hey, Arsic, how are you doing? Haven't seen you in a while. What's going on? What a title. Lucifer in the Biscuit Hammer is a fucking manga that came out in 2005 and ran until 2010. I read this manga as it was coming out, and it is one of my favorite manga of all time. I legitimately cannot believe it is getting an adaption. That baffles me to no end. It has been 12 years since the manga ended. <laughs> I had, let me be clear, when it was ending, I was like, oh man, I hope this gets an anime adaption now that it's ending. And then there became a point where I was like, it's never getting an anime adaption. Very clearly. We missed the boat on that shit. And now it's like, hey, you remember that manga? Twelve years later, here you go. And I'm like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? I cannot believe this. Wait, what, what, where is it even on the list? Uh, 20, 19, 18, 17. Yeah, it's number 17 on my favorite manga of all time list. What the hell prompted this? 
Been deep into Monster Hunter Mines for three weeks now. Finally beat the main scenario last night and gained access to the DLC that released last week. Congratulations! I can't believe they are making this. Wow. Okay, well, obviously I'm on board. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Anime adaption of my 17th favorite manga? Uh, hello? Yes, please. Uh, I can't... <laughs> I cannot believe this. If you told me five years ago that this was getting an adaption, I would not have believed it. Isekai Yakio, um, Yakioku, Parallel World Pharmacy. Is This is like the fifth thing we've seen where there's a pharmacy in another world. Why is this a trend now? After losing his little sister to an incurable disease, world-famous medical researcher Kandi, Kanji Yukitani gave his all to cure patients by dedicating his life to inventing new medicines. Oh, I guess I should ask, how are you enjoying Master Hunter? Are you having fun with it, or are you over it? I, I guess I should probably ask how it's treating you. I noticed you said you beat it, but not, not, how, not how it's going. Um, after working himself to death at the age of 31, the former pharmacist wakes up as a 10-year-old child whose body has been struck by lightning. What? He discovers that he's been reincarnated into a medieval, medieval world as Falma, a child in respective De Medix, Med Medis family. In a world where divine arts, magic granted through blessings from guardian deities exists, Falma realizes that his body is a host to the guardian deity of medicine. The boy has been granted the mythical divine arts of creation and reduction, as well as the ability to instantly diagnose illnesses in people's bodies. He soon discovers the terrible state medicine in the world. Only nobles are able to afford medical care, which is ineffective at best and detrimental at worst. Using modern knowledge and his divine powers, Felma gradually makes a name for himself as a pharmacist despite his young age, even earning the recognition of the Imperial Court. When he finally acquires the proper pharmacy of his own, sets out to pursue his goal of improving healthcare in the Saint Fleuve, uh, Saint Fleuve empire and making it accessible to all okay so there's been a recent trend of uh, like isekai fantasy like uh, uh pharmacies but this is just that but then they've also mixed in uh ascendance of a bookworm for some reason <laughs> speaking of isekai and reincarnation i found an audio book of tanya the evil read by monica ryle doesn't she voice tanya in the dub i think that's probably the person you would want to do Right? Yeah, she does. Yeah, so that's who you would want to do. That's who you would want to do it, I think. Uh, it's my number two game of the year so far this year behind Elven Ring, but not by much. So, okay, so you're having a good time with it. Um... <clears throat> I, my number one game of this, <laughs> have I played a new game this year <laughs> that wa that wasn't <laughs> Elden, I think I've only played Elden Ring, I think that's the only game that came, when did uh, Brilliant Diamond come, it doesn't, I know, yeah, Brilliant, Brilliant Diamond came out last year, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure <laughs> Elden Ring is the only new game I've played this year. Uh, most of the things I'm interested in that are coming out this year are, like, backloaded, uh, like, later months. I know that Soul Hackers drops in August, and then I know Hogwarts Legacy drops in, like, uh, November, I think? Uh, November, October, December, that area. And then I think they pushed Final Fantasy back. So, those are the only new games coming out this year that I that I really care about. Um, so we'll see. This year was front loaded for me. Yeah, I didn't give a shit about anything that came out this on the front. I didn't even care about Elden Ring. It was just happened to be <laughs> gotten for me. Uh, I haven't played a new game this year. This all that's going to change next month though. Well, that's good. Hitting hitting all hitting all yeses. It seems like. So, like, what's up with this, right? This is a medical fantasy visual novel. What was the original like? Original's got a 740. What's its tags? Isekai. It's Isekai and med. It's just Isekai and medicine. All right. Honestly, it could be interesting. But I think my interest in this is mostly coming from where Ascendance of the Bookworm is coming from. Because 
I can see that it's probably influenced by Ascendance of the Bookworm, and I think that's the only reason I care at all about this. So if our only tags that we have are medicine, fantasy, and isekai, you gotta do more for me. You gotta throw in, like, comedy or drama or romance, because just, like, just having medicine in a fantasy world, that's not a plot. You know what I'm saying? That's nothing. You, you got more than that. I need more than that. Biggest game I played this year was Royal, and that game is like three years old. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Excuse me. Legend of Arceus. See, I didn't give a shit about Arceus. Elden Ring. Didn't give a shit about Elden Ring. Stranger of Paradise. Didn't even know that game existed until I saw you play it. Now Monster Hunter Rise. Didn't really care about that either. I'm um, looking forward to the Crisis Core remake. I don't... Who's behind the Crisis Core remake? Who Who's making that? Hold on. I feel nothing for the Crisis Core remake, for the record, but... Now, what I want is, apparently, that, like... It sounds like they're making a real remake of Final Fantasy VII that includes all of the games in, like, one convenient location as, like, one unbroken chain of game. Uh, that, that seemed like what that mobile ad was looking for. So hopefully they'll, like, port that, because that sounds like the remake everyone wanted. Um, Uta, while... How do I say this bullshit? I never realized how much I like Resident Evil until just I noticed how many times I play Resident Evil. I also played Resident Evil, but I replay Resident Evil every year. <sighs> Uta Ware Ru Mono Futari no Hakuro. Uta Ware Mono Mask of Truth. <laughs> so this is a thing that Japanese does is they'll create a word that just goes on forever. Uh, maybe if you're lucky, uh, they'll port that to Switch like they did with uh, FF15 Mobile. They do occasionally port their mobile games to PC, uh, and that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Especially if it's just, if they actually do every, like, uh, uh, Final Fantasy game in, like, one game, that would be great. That would be amazing. Um... I'm, I'd be more interested in that than I am, like, Remake 2 coming out. I literally will not play Remake 2. I, I have no interest in this. Um, after the events of Mask of Deception, the Yamato Empire is now ruled by an iron fist by a ruthless usurper who seeks to subjugate all before him. It's up to a couple of familiar faces to band together against the might of the Imperial Army, and the fate of the world hangs in the balance as nations and generals must pick a side to fight with this perilous civil war secrets will be revealed friendships will be tested and battles will be fought will peace and order be restored or will victory at any cost be the beginning of the end this is the piece apparently the third season of this have i ever read anything about this before no 2015 what the shit even is that okay well then let's just go all the way back to season one and find out what this is about this is a 2006 anime this is Uta Wareru Mono. An injured man is found in the woods by a girl named Uru, and everything about him is mysterious. Without knowledge of his past, nor even his own name, he is welcomed to Uru's home and is given the name Hokuro. 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 Haku. Haku. Oro, Hakuoro, God, that's impossible to say, by her grandmother and younger sister, <sighs> fuck off, Aruru. Uh, uh, while, <laughs> while the inhabitants of the village have large ears and tails, Hakuoro, ha Hakuoro, <laughs> fucking Christ, Hakuoro's defining physical trait is quite different as he has neither ears nor a tail but only a mask that cannot be removed uh soon after he becomes part of the villagers lives a revolution against the tyrannical emperor of the land begins and the conflict finds its way to his new home haku oro must do whatever he can to save the people in the village that he's come to love all while uncovering the mysteries that shroud his past okay this sounds very boring well now we know uh, Final Fantasy VII Remake is as much of a remake as the 12 Mon Monkeys HBO series to the 12 Monkeys movie. They made a 12 Monkeys HBO series? 
let's see. Orient, Awajishima, Gekai Tohen. This is the second core of Orient, adapting Orient. What do you want from me? This is the second. Did I read Orient's description? Yeah, 2022. Okay, yeah, this is created by the Maji guy. Yeah, and Maji sucks. So, moving on. Uh, Renmei, Kugun, Koku, Maho, Ongakutai, Luminous Witches, League of Nations, Air Force, Aviation Magic Band, Luminous Witches? Uh, these are witches who defend everyone's smiles and fight enemies through the healing power of music. These witches opposite of those in the defense fleet are idols known as the Music Squadron. This is apparently a spin-off of Strike Witches. You had me until music. Uh, with a, uh, with a score of 666. The most evil Strike Witches. Spin-off. Welcome back, Arsic. Hopefully it wasn't anything serious. Joshin Sean, Dropkick X. This is the third season of Dropkick, Sean. I have almost certainly just read Dropkick <laughs> Dropkick's description before. I have almost 100% guarantee you I've read this out loud. Yeah, I did. 2018. Uh, what I will say is it looks terrible. It looks terrible. It has always looked terrible. But what I did see is a clip from this, and there was a cameo from, um, uh, <laughs> there was a cameo from Hitsune Miku, which is a weird pull. Uh, but anyway, yeah, I'm gonna cl close out on that. Love Live Super Star. Look, let's be honest. We all know I'm committed to the Love Live now. I'm living the love live life we you know it i know it we all know i'm gonna watch this all right let's let's not even front let, we're not even gonna lie it's happening we all know it all right okay okay <laughs> bucci gire in an area when samurai ruled Japan, the Shinsugumi has been wiped out by an unknown attacker, leaving one survivor. Seven criminals are chosen as doubles for the Shinsugumi to protect the security of Kyoto. A top-secret replacement operation is executed. Weren't, weren't the Shinsugumi implemented in, like, the Meiji Restoration? Weren't they, like, the anti-samurai unit? How old are the Shinsugumi? Am I wrong? Yeah, yeah, no, 1863. The samurai most certainly did not rule Japan in 1863. I guess that's, I guess that's why they call it fiction. <laughs> We're having an issue getting the title, uh, so we have to get the, uh, tag. So they pulled her over for no tag. Luckily, the bill of sale wasn't dated, uh, so she got off with a verbal warming. You ever seen the Love Live Weezer mix? I have not. But I haven't seen anything from Weezer ever. So there you go. Um, that 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 sucks. I'm looking. I'm still looking at getting a car, uh, a new car, pretty soon. So. But yeah, it's, it's good you got off with a warning though. Or I should say a new used. I'm looking at getting a used car. Looking at getting a, a new used car. Futo Tentai. Ten tentai. Futo Tentai. And yet, <laughs> they changed it to Futo P. I can't derive. It's worth learning what if you're in a bus that is being hijacked by criminals and then the criminals get shot but also the bus driver got shot and now you're speeding down a highway at like 500 miles per hour on a bus with a rocket strapped to it then what are you gonna do maid <laughs> new used cars are the way to go in the city of Futo, criminals make use of the USB-like devices called Gaia Memories to turn themselves into super-powered monsters known as Doe Pants. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Holy shit, 
I wasn't prepared for how stupid that was going to be. Uh, you don't ride the bus? I didn't say you had to ride the bus. I just said you ended up on the bus, all right? You got teleported or you got pushed in or you were a hostage or something. In this scenario, I was assuming you were a hostage. Wrecking havoc in the otherwise peaceful city. However, there are also heroes who utilize the guy memories to fight these criminals, one of whom is the self-proclaimed hard-boiled detective Shotaro Hidari. With the help of his witty partner Flip, the two transform into common writer... W, the legendary hero of Fuda, Fudo, <laughs> the legendary hero of Fuda City. It's a pretty great place to be. Bring condoms. Um, after the fall of Museum, the evil organization responsible for many crimes in Fudo, the production and distribution of Gaia memories has halted. However, remnants of the Gaia memories still remain within society and are sold in the black market at high prices. Thus, the two heroes from the Narumi Detective Agency uh, are yet to have time to relax. Sights of the Dew Pants. <laughs> so dumb still occur, and the agency receives more and more clients who claim to experience supernatural phenomena. Regardless of the arduous nature of the task, Common Writer W whoop, promises that those who hurt Fudo will inevitably count up their sins. This is a Common Writer anime. I know next to nothing about Common Writer. Um, I love the colors, though. Ooh, now those are some pretty-ass colors. But I do not give a shit about Common Rider, and I refuse to start. Okay, Prima Doll. Uh, let's see. Krone Kotai, a cafe located in the Imperial Capital's Fifth Ward. Girls who work here, work there, are autonomous mechanical dolls, uh, also known as automata. They were originally created as weapons for the Great War that ended only a few years ago. Now they're looking for new roles in a peaceful world. This seems like a sort of like cute girls do cute things, slice of life kind of thing. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting here. <laughs> writer jump, writer kick. I'm going to assume that's a common thing. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, it seems like a cute girls do cute things sort of thing. Who's making this? What's the studio behind this? I'm, act I'm giving this a, a fair shot, even though I know I'm not going to watch this. This is Studio Beebury Animation Studio, who makes fucking nothing. They made Grizzia, and they made, like, the second season of Quince. What the hell is Maho Shoujo Magical Destroyers? This almost looks like Asuka. She's got an anarchy symbol. This is probably some, like, post-Madoka, like, edgelord shit. That's, that's the vibe I'm getting. This is some, like, post-Madoka magical girl shit. God, that's so goddamn boring. Okay, Kamu Kuzu Idol. Phantom of the Idol. <laughs> That's a good name, actually. Uh, Yuya, one half of the boy pop duo Zings, may be the laziest performer in the Japanese music industry. His partner is out already, I can't believe this premise. His partner is out there giving 110% every night, and thankfully he's quite popular. But Yuya's half ass sloppy dancing and his frankly hostile attitude towards the audience has fans hating him and his agent looking for any excuse to cut him loose. The career of a pop idol just isn't the path of easy leisure and adulation Yuya expected. After a particularly lifeless concert appearance, Yuya meets a girl backstage she's dressed the nines in a colorful outfit she's full of vim and vigor and all she wants from life is to perform there's just one problem yuya has been dead for a year this is she's been dead for a year this is the ghost of aishi mogami the beloved singer whose time on stage was tragically cut short unless if ghosts are real is spirit possession really that much of a stress this is going to sound crazy i don't hate that premise actually My only regret is I can't get a romance tag in here. Can I be honest? 
I might be in. <laughs> I think I'm in, actually. I kind of like it at. That sounds cool. You know what? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Uh, okay, that sounds good. Man, I heard that this season is really weak, and if we're looking at this, I've probably added, like, five anime. This... People are not joking. This is... This does not seem to be a very high-quality season. <laughs> like, this seems weak even for... Like, summer's usually weak. This seems, like, extra weak for summer. In, in Punk, you can spit at your fans, and they'll spit right back at you, and they'll come back for more. <laughs> uh, Wawaru R. Snowtoria Sun. Smile of the Arsnatoria, the animation. This is a story... Of the fun-filled daily life of girls who strive to be true ladies while being educated and trained in magic and learning proper manners at the dorm-based magical academy of Ashram. Yo, uh, so I was petting my cat earlier and she, like, scratched me? And I started to get, like, a weird rash immediately. And I put a little Benadryl in it, like, went away, but it was weird. I was like, why am I getting a rash already? It's, like, too fast to be, like, cat scratch fever or something. So, no idea. Maybe my skin was just irritated from the scratch itself. It also could not be cat-related. Because I was, like, barely touched, and there's no, like, break in my skin or anything. So maybe it was just, like, I rubbed my hand on something I shouldn't have. I don't know. Weird. This is adapted from a smartphone game. This is 23 episode, 23 minute episodes. What I would have liked from this is I would have liked 10 minute episodes. I would have liked this to be a little shorter. Because this seems like a premise that would be really hard to keep going for full episode length. What is this about? Yes, thank you. Whoa, what is that? Oh, yeah, they are making an Oshinoko. Yes, uh, uh, Elise, I think, is a real big fan of the manga. And I've heard very good things about this. Yeah, eight. Poison oak? <laughs> I don't go outside, maid. Looks interesting. Might check it out. Looks like a magical girl action anime. Seems promising. Want to know? I think uh, I'll try this for the character guy. Same guy from ReZero. Commonly tagged as fantasy, magic, magic school, school life. So I'm guessing slice of life school with CDG, CGDT. Uh, God, that acronym is impossible to say quickly. Uh, CGDCT in a fantasy setting. That's what I'm guessing is CGDCT. Uh, maybe something similar to Witch Aka or Hina Logi from Luck and Logic. Animation and art reminds me of ReZero. Yeah, this episode went from CG, CT to ethnic cleansing real quick. Well, I'm always up for some ethnic cleansing. So, all right, you know what? You've sold me. You're a deco. The f <laughs> uh, all right, you sold me. You've sold me on the title. Story begins when Barry, an average girl from an average home, meets Hack, a girl who looks like a boy. Charmed by Hack, Barry meets up with the team Hack leads, the Ghost Detectives Club. Oh, well, that's disappointing. Members of this club are socially dead, working invisibly within the digitally controlled society of Tom Sawyer. Pfft, what? As she works with the group, Barry learns about Zero, a mysterious figure who lurks within Tom... <laughs> I can't watch the show because I can't take that seriously. Uh, she and Hack decide to chase down this figure, and in time, the truth behind the city is revealed. I want to quote that, but I'm afraid of the repercussions if I did, because that sounds real bad with no context. I also thought that. <laughs> I also thought, I'm like, that'd be a pretty entertaining quote in the back of my head, and then I thought about it, and I'm like... You know what? <laughs> and I was, like, debating whether I should be like, you know what, maybe don't quote that. <laughs> maybe don't quote that one. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that joke will play as cleanly. This seems like nothing. 
You had me at the title and you lost me at the at the description. Tap in! Tap in. Laugh till you cry. Uh, Sakamoto Yayoi, a diehard fan of comedians and comedy acts, enrolls in the private uh, Kazuki High School in Nanba, Osaka's entertainment district, famous as the starting point for many comedians. You don't need to tell me that. I knew that already. She reunites with Takahashi Yamogi, a childhood friend who once formed the comedy duo Kona Monzu with her and the, uh, when they were little. Before long, they find themselves putting together a routine at a park like they did before in order to create a local shopping contest. At that moment, a mysterious girl calls out to them. You know what would be super bold is uh, a modern-day warrior, uh, mean, mean stride, today's Tom Sawyer, mean, mean pride. <laughs> You know it would be really bold, and I want to see this. Tell me if there is a movie like this. There almost certainly is, but tell me if there's a movie like this. I want to see a very serious drama, possibly even with like some tragic elements, about a comedian trying to put together a comedy routine uh, for a stand-up comedy. But like the show, it but like the show is not funny at all right? There's no jokes. It's not funny. It takes itself super seriously. It's like, this is the serious business of creating material for a comedy routine. And then what I want at the end is once we go through this like serious, like, uh, uh, like sort of like possibly even like slightly depressing, like hardcore drama movie, I want at the end the comedian to get up on stage and I want it to be a fucking gut buster. All right. I want to see the routine and I want to be in stitches at the end. That's what I want. I want that movie. (laughs) Get on it, Hollywood. Uh, okay. Let's see. Studio drive. I'm unfamiliar with studio drive. What have they made? Uh, let's see. Looks like they're making an explosion in Uzumaki. That's actually not a very good pedigree. Uh, if only because explosion and Uzumaki aren't out yet. (laughs) Uh, yes, Zach. And then he makes a deal with the mafia and then his pregnant wife dies. And then Jack Napier becomes the Joker. Dun, dun, dun. Isn't that a plot of a Batman film? You know what? Yes, that's what I want to see. I want to see an adaption of the killing joke, but at the end, everything goes okay, and then the Joker just gets up on stage and delivers his comedy routine, and it goes well from that point on. I want to see a subversion. He doesn't, he gets away from Batman, doesn't fall into the chemical tank, and then just goes on to be a successful comedian. Make that movie, Hollywood. Uh, I'm mixed on this one. In theory... A good comedy integrates this comedy into its story. So the idea of a sort of like comedic based anime about the creation of comedy seems like it would be very hard to pull off. I mean, granted, that is the plot of Seinfeld, but shut up. Very good ratings. Two tens, a five, and a one. <laughs> oh, there's nothing to go on here. It, this is a leap of faith, I feel like. This is just a straight up leap of faith. Well, I was thinking uh, up until he kills it at the comedy club, I was like, this sounds an awful lot like the killing joke, Joker 2. Jack Napier becomes a successful comedian, set the same universe as Stan Lee's <laughs> Batman. No, Joker 2 is going to be a musical and they have Lady Gaga playing Harley Quinn. That wasn't a joke. Da, 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 dun. <laughs> uh.
What am I feeling on this one? I don't know. It's very cute looking. Have you ever seen Stan Lee's Batman? It's weird. I've seen art. Uh, oh, you didn't know? Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's confirmed, right? Hold on. Let me make sure. That I don't think that's a rumor. Hold on, we're gonna go to IGM. I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure it's not a rumor. Joker 2 confirmed. Harley Quinn and Batman. Pretty sure the musical thing was confirmed. New York Post. Mm, I'm not seeing anything definitive. Maybe it was just a rumor? Okay, uh, so these are just rumors. Okay, okay, they're just rumors. It seems like Lady Gaga is confirmed, but it being a musical isn't. And these are just like, this is just fan art. So it looks like she's in the movie, but we don't know that she's, uh, we don't know that she's playing Harley Quinn either. So we don't, so okay, so it's just rumors, it's just rumors. But that's what I had heard, was that it was a musical with Lady Gaga as Harley Quinn. Uh, that's even weirder than Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 being a horror comedy. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, anyway, Teppin, laugh till you cry. Uh, what am I feeling about this? It looks, it looks kind of cute. Honestly, it looks kind of cute. You know what? Part of me wants to give this a try, so I'll do it. You can't stop me. I have low standards for entry. This is Shoot, Gold of the Future. Atashi Kamiya is a former captain at Kakagawa High School and the world-renowned courageous captain for a famous Italian soccer team. Hidato Suji is a student at the same school who seems uninterested in the now weakened soccer team. Their meeting is the start of a new legend. This is apparently the sequel to Shoot, a movie, which I'm not going to read the description of. Uh, because Shoot came out in 1994. You know what? Screw it. I'll do it. Okay, Frankfurt youth team, Kubo's team while he was in Germany comes to Japan to play a series of friendly matches. Frankfurt captain Rudy wanted to see why Kubo left Germany to form a team in Japan, so he challenges Kekigawa High to a match. I, no, hold on. I have read the description of this shit. I have. I've definitely, no, I didn't. I didn't. No, this is 1993. Well, you know what? I don't care. Shut up. <laughs> we'll read it when we get there. I just read Demon Souls thing you posted, so Elden Ring is easier than Demon Souls or something. Uh, well, if you're playing the PS3 version, no, <laughs> no, it is not. <laughs> that uh, that cheat is uh, 
that she is uh, pretty, pretty, pretty useful for Demon Souls. Um, Elden Ring isn't... It, it, okay. Elden Ring is easier than Demon Souls in some areas and not in other areas. But I think the thing about Elden Ring is that it's more forgiving than... Elden than uh, Demon Souls. There's more bonfires. There's more. Uh, there, there's like midpoint checkpoints in Elden Ring. Called... But anyway, yeah. Uh, Elden Ring. Elden Ring's difficulty is mostly based on how much screwing around you do. Like if you go straight to the plot points, you're gonna have a rough time. But if you goof off and have some fun, do some side quests, and do some exploring, it, then it's 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 pretty easy. Oh, and if you play. Uh, Dex bleed build? Please. Uh, Musashino. Musashino. I feel like I've read this before. No. This is a sequel to Arawa no Usagi-chan, an original anime advertising Arawa City in Saitama, Japan. These tourism ad animes are usually pretty charming if they're short. Oh, they are short. Yeah, three minutes. Okay, I'm in. I love watching these, like, tourism anime. I love it. I vouch for Elden Ring being easier because I actually be... <laughs> Yeah, uh, d d the difficulty between Demon Souls and Demon Souls is definitely one of the easiest of the Soulsborne games. It, um, the easiest Soulsborne game is Dark Souls Three on New Game Plus. That is piss baby easy. We're not talking about DLC because the DLC is a whole ass can of worms. But like main game, like main storyline only, New Game Plus DS Three is so unbelievably easy and honestly main game ds3 is very easy also um okay in difficulty order all right using every possible available exploit i can think of off the top of my head right it like ideal scenario easiest ds3 new game plus okay uh followed by demon souls with the uh, item dupe cheat, uh, followed by Elden Ring, followed by... I would actually be tempted to say DS1 there, although there's probably... But that might just be on me, because I have recently come to the discovery that uh, Arcane doesn't stop scaling, like there's no soft cap. Uh, so 99 Arcane in Bloodborne might actually put it above DS1 as far as difficulty. DS1 is a, probably the tightest that any of the games get. Um, so take that with a grain of salt, but probably 99, probably Arcane build Bloodborne would probably be next up in the order. Because you still have to know how to play Bloodborne, which is why the only reason I would put it above, um... I would put it above Elden Ring, is that <laughs> you still need to know how to actually play it. Uh, but then over that, I would do DS1 for sure. And then the hardest is, without a doubt, um, DS2. Like, just straight up. It, it just is. So, there you go. Th those are the FromSoft games, easiest to hardest, assuming you're using maximum levels of bullshittery. Hmm. So it's worth noting DS2 is the most balanced because they did never-ending PvP balance patches for that game. That's why it's considered to be possibly the best PvP. Actually, no, DS2 is considered to be the best as far as PvP goes. So, because I remember, I remember the like shit fit that people had about DS3 PvP. Shin Tennis no Oji Sama. Uh, U17 World Cup, The Prince of Tennis 2, U17 World Cup. This is this is the sequel to Shin, Prince of Tennis, OVA versus the Ten Geniuses. Dog, this is Prince of Tennis. I'm not going to go back 7,000 years 
and watch and describe Prince of Tennis. It's on my drop list. And like five years from now, you'll hear me review the first Prince of Tennis. All right. Look, I'm not going to go all the way. My voice is actually hurting. Okay, this is KJ File. The story is set in a world where unique kaiju suddenly began to appear in various places around the world. Members of the United States uh, Nation's Monster Observatory will explore a world where kaijus with great powers and humankind live together. I think kaijus are super boring. <laughs> Do we have anything else going on? Just this image. Okay, moving on. Extreme Hearts. Extreme Hearts. The story is set in the near future. Hypersports becomes a hobby competition that is popular with children and adults alike. Hiyori Hayama is a high school singer who has nothing to do with hypersports. However, the story begins to be set in motion after... <laughs> After a certain incident and encounter, this is the story about how we met our best friends. <laughs> no, I don't give a shit about Godzilla either. Um, wow. <laughs> Source Mal News. Hey Mal News, great job <laughs> on your grammar. <laughs> what a fucking nightmare that was. What'd you do? Translate that from Japanese <laughs> with, like, a translator? What was that? Um, this is a sports... Mu this is... This is about sports idols, I think is what this is. I think this is sports idols. This is the plot of Battle Athletes! Hold on, this is just a ripoff of Battle Athletes with much cuter costume design. Who rips off battle athletes? This is Source Original. Why would anyone rip off battle athletes? I mean, I'm gonna watch it, but like, what a bizarre decision. Some of the new 3D renders of Demons and Soul Hackers 2. Oh, I have not been following anything new about that game. <laughs> I have not watched a single video since the first trailer, I think. No, that's not true. I heard the description of the battle system and it went one in ear and out the other. Shine Post. The idol union, unit Tings has big dreams, but only small achievements, and is not very popular. The best manager in the world was supposed to be their savior, but I'm not interested in being your manager. The man who shows up is Naosei Hinaki, a man with no motivation. However, he has a special power. Elaborate. This is a story of y you and the young girls brightly... To become absolute idols. The best idol entertainment begins here. What a bull. Oh yeah, I know that one. Hold on. This is a story of you and the ma and the girls shining brightly to become absolute idols. The best idol entertainment begins here. Shine Post is part of a multimedia project which will include a manga adaption, concerts, music videos, and a video game by Konami Digital Entertainment and Akihiro Ishihara. Okay, so it's a sort of, okay, so they're trying to do the Love Live thing, basically. But it, I'm, so I would be more interested if it didn't say, I'm the producer because I don't know how to read that. What does that mean? <laughs> this isn't in first person, right? Yeah, I'm gonna pass on this, I think. Konami still makes games? Yeah, they still make games. The rumor has it they have like three Silent Hills in production right now. They also made a really shitty Metal Gear Zombie game at one point. Um, let's see. Yuro wa neko to isaho. When, Furu F when Futa comes home, uh, tired at night, all he wants to do is spend time with his cat. All the mysterious habits and mannerisms of house cats are carefully reproduced in this relaxed, cute comedy about living with an adorable furball. That sounds delightful. I own a cat. I will just play with my actual cat. Okay, moving on. 
card fight vanguard will plus dress. Four months after the battle at Nagoya Castle, you, you, and friends received an invitation to a tournament that Deluxe Tournament aims to determine the strongest fighter, bringing together both front fighters who are active in official tournaments and the hidden powerhouse counterfighters like Blackout that compete against each other for flags. The existing characters from Overdress will be competing with new characters from Wildress, such as Raika, Michiru, and Arara to become the strongest of them all. This sounds amazing. This sounds like the fan's dream season of Vanguard, of Cardfight Vanguard. And I'm not one of those fans. So, I am th talking myself hoarse. I severely overestimated the amount of talk. Frost 5. I'm going to go with Black Frost, Jack Frost, King Frost. That's 3. I know I could pull out one more Frost. Lemon Frost. Yep, there you go. That's definitely one I wouldn't have gotten. God. Melon frog? Oh, are these just... Oh, okay. It's like the magical girls in Yu-Gi-Oh. These are actually really shitty designs. <laughs> Let's see, Chimimo, the heartwarming comedy anime centers around Chimimo, who is a messenger of hell and a shape-shifting evil demon. Chimimo is one of 12 evil demons whose mission is to turn the human world into hell. The 12 demons, along with Hellsan, go to the human world, but Hellsan and Chimimo become freeloaders to a family of three sisters named Matsumi, Hazuki, and Mei. Blue Hawaii Frost and Strawberry. I love that one of them is just Blue Hawaii Frost. <laughs> I, lo I love how one of them's name just comes out of nowhere. Hanabi-chan wa uh, Okurogachi. We know nothing about this. We don't even have a length on this. This looks like this is like a... Like a three to five minute anime. Could not even speculate. It says it's based on a manga, but it doesn't cite which manga. Oh, they're shaved ice flavors. Oh, that's the, okay. Now, this is a surprise. Only one Chinese show. Win Weiki Shaonian. Wow, that's a Chinese show from 2005, huh? Um, Weiki Shaonian, chess player. The story focuses on the journey of Go Prodigy uh, Zhang Lier, uh, who, man, you thought my Japanese pronunciation was bad, uh, who encouraged by Monk to learn chess skills at various schools to participate in the 20-year National Go competition, competing against other sects and Japanese players for the title of Master of Chess. I just want to say that Go is not chess. Thank you. Um... <laughs> It's a very distinct game. You could make an argument that Shoji is a sort of chess, but Go is not chess. The Chinese shows are all... You know, weirdly enough, this is a Chinese show with a different plot. However, it also came out in 2005, so take that what you will. Alright, we're on to ONAs. Okay, JoJo... Part 6, Stone Ocean, 
part two with my girl Foo Fighters. Hell yeah. Got Foo Fighters, got Jolene, got Imperio, Hermes, Weather Report, and I've never been able to say his name. An Ansui, Anasui. <laughs> Uh, and 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 a sway, and a sway, yeah, and a sway. Uh, okay, yeah, obviously, I'm gonna watch this at some point. I want to wait until Stone Ocean is done, though. I don't want to watch it in uh, batches. Foo Fighters is such a basic bitch rock band. Well, all you need to know about Foo Fighters is Foo Fighters is best girl. Cyberpunk Edge Runners. So this is an adept, this is a cyberpunk anime created by Trigger, and by Cyberpunk, it's specifically based off of the role-playing game. Uh, Edge Runners tells a standalone story about a street kid trying to survive a technology and body modification obsessed city in the future, having everything to lose. He chooses to stay alive, becoming an Edge Runner, a mercenary outlaw. Also known as a cyberpunk. Um, I saw the trailer. It looks like color vomit. And I would be lying to you if I didn't say I was in. I like that it so it says source game. Because it would be super hard to say that it's based off of a board game. Take Garui Twin. As first year student of the renowned Hayaki Hayaka Hayak Hayakao Private Academy, Mary Satomi knows her future is set uh, for a one way cruise to the top. That is, until the encounter with an old classmate turned house pet throws the newbie princess into a world of gambling. Can a normal girl like Mary make her friends and survive um, debtless through only wit and luck? So I have heard Kakigurui described as an advertisement on why Japan should never legalize gambling. Um, it is very good. I do not like watching it. It makes me a nervous wreck. So apparently this is Mary's spinoff. Holy shit. Three cents? Look, I'm going to be honest. If your computer can handle it, that is... A very, very good deal. Because Cyberpunk is actually a decent game. Overhyped to hell for launch. But if your computer can handle it, and they've performed patches to like fix a lot of the problems. If your computer can handle it, that three cents is actually a steal. Uh, and I would recommend getting it, frankly. If I saw... I, w I would consider getting it, and I already own it. Oh, uh, I guess I should have read this. This is Overlord Play 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 It Is 4. It's like... It's like the dumb Overlord shorts, alright? I don't know what anyone wants from me. It's just the dumb Play 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 It Is Overlord shorts. Nobody really cares. They're the specials bundled with the Blu-rays and DVDs, okay? That's it. That's all you get. Nobody gives a shit. Okay, this is Obey Me Season 2. This is the second season of Obey Me, which is apparently a cute boys do, I'm gonna say, idle things. 2021. I definitely read this already. Moving on. Wait. Oh no, it's an Atome game about cute boys being demons in a school. Well, isn't that fun? Check that out, ladies um, and gentlemen. But Atome games are targeted towards women, so that's why I said that. Okay. Yowai 5000 and no Shoshuko Ku Dragon Iwa Renakai uh, Jaryu Nintai. A 50,000-year-old vegan dragon was live, uh, living peacefully when one day a young girl showed up in his cave. She offered herself as a sacrifice in order to gain favor for her village. He played along as the great evil dragon and the demon lord's army leader. In order to get rid of her, however, uh, his little white lie awoke her hidden powers and his peaceful life suddenly ended. 
That actually sounds like that could be cute. I'm going to watch the Eurocamp movie? What? What do I have to do? What? Oh, the... Okay, I gotcha. Honestly? A gentle dragon of 5,000 years old. It was recognized as an evil dragon without any cause. Oh. Shi Kao Lao Long Bei Guan. Oh, is this Chinese? Studio Lan. Oh, this is Chinese. Oh, no. I can't watch Chinese things. Oh. Because when the Chinese comes out of their mouth, it breaks my brain. I cannot handle it. My brain doesn't recognize any of the words, and it, I, my brain starts going, What is happening? What is being said? <laughs> um, Yin Yan Yong Heng. Chong Sheng Pian. This is, of course, the second season of Yin Yan Yong Yang. Which I already read, so moving on. This is, I apologize to everyone in China for me butchering your language. Uh, Dao Pu Kang Kang Kiong Nyan Fan. Battle Through the Heavens, fifth season. This dude's name is super long. Oh, this. I've definitely read this before. Moving on, then. This is the same thing? This is just a remake of the first season of the same thing we just saw. Excuse me. This is Dao Pu, uh, Kong, Kong, is it Kong or Song? I'm going to say Kong. Kong Kiong Yon Ki. And this is just a remake of the first season of the thing we just looked at. So moving on. Uh, this is Long Zhu. Also called Dragon Raja. This is adapted from Zhang Nan's Zhang, Zhang novel of the same name. So, cool, I guess. Zach, uh, trying to watch Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon is not animated, and I watched that movie in theaters. It, o it only happens with uh, uh, animation. Um, Han Meng, Shan Hai Yao. This is very pretty art, actually. Look, if you're looking at this, look at this. Look at that art. Ooh, that's that's gorgeous. Look at that. That's less so, but that that's very pretty. So is that. Wow. Wow. These are very good posters. I really doubt it looks this good when you actually get into it, but yeah. Wow, that's a hell of an art style. Fantasy Mountain and Sea Ballad. This is Zhan Wang 3, Zhai Gan Yi Dan Shen, Zhan Zin, third season. That, speaking of pretty art, look at that shit. Holy. That is gorgeous. I mean, say what you will about these Chinese series always being the exact same thing over and over again. At least they're pretty to look at. Yeah, it's 2018. I read it already. Okay, moving on. Meng Qi Shi Shen, Huan Zi Zui Han. I'm going to be totally honest. If they ever give me a tag to filter out <laughs> Chinese series, I will do it in a second. What the fuck is magical sex shift? Oh, gotcha. It, it's just gender bender. Okay. Uh, <laughs> it's just a politically correct way to say gender bender. Um, yeah, there's no way to filter it. Damn it. 
Uh, what is this? This is Mengqi Shi Shen Huanzi Zui Han. And this is the third season of that. And this came out in 2018, so I don't have to talk about it. Okay, moving on. Kiao Ni La Zan Shen Zitong. Yup. I love that these are just listed, but literally nothing, <laughs> nothing is listed about them. This is Huan Hua Riji third season. God troubles me. Wow, this looks like the third season of a Chinese show that is actually somehow not about cultivation. <laughs> and yet we don't know anything about it. <laughs> Beautiful. Great. Perfect. Moving on. This is Shanghai Gushi. Shanghai Melody. Wow! Something with an actual description. The story revolves around an ordinary Shanghai family, uh, Fei Fei Han, who devoted herself... Uh, Fei Fei is a pretty name, actually. I'm not going to lie. Who devoted herself to the advertising industry, encountered a career crisis in her first year, and at the same time, her parents are increasingly pressuring her to get married. Under the double attack, Fei Fei's life fell into a mess. Whenever Fei Fei fell into a confusion, his father, Dong Liang... Dong Lian... Dong... Dong... Okay, so there's an N and a G there. Dong Liang Han would show up to encourage his daughter in an entwined memories. Fei Fei realizes the love and teachings from her father, Dong Liang. In the end, with the encouragement of family and friends, Fei Fei gets rid of her confusion and continues on with new vigor. That says nothing about this, but okay, sure, whatever, <laughs> moving on. Uh, this is by Yao Pu, third season. She's pure pretty. This is by Yao Pu Fairy. Uh, the, okay, okay, Fairy Albums. Yeah, I read the description of this. Okay, moving on. This is Xiao Nian Bai Ma Zui Chun Feng. Moving on. Story takes place 20 years before Xiao Nian Ge Zing. 2018, I read it. Moving on. <laughs> This is Knights of the Zodiac, Saint Seiya Battle for Sanctuary. Finally, something something I can say out loud with my words. Um, Knights of the Zodiac came out in 2019, so I've definitely read it and ignored it. Zui Yu Zin. Zui Yu Zin. Nope, nothing. It says historical. What is this, World War II? Is it a World War II thing? That's a Japanese flag headband, though. What the shit is this about? I've never been more interested in a Chinese series. <laughs> oh well, moving on, I guess. This is uh, Judai Shuang Zhao. Follows a pair of twin brothers who, because of the feud between two formidable martial artists, were separated at birth and raised on opposing sides. Alright, moving on. This is uh, based on Gu Long's novel of the same name. Never heard of it. Don't tend to read novels in Chinese, though, to be fair. This is Wo Kao Chongzi Dang Wudai. Make money to be a king. Well, that's just good life advice. And nothing. Okay. This is Shenmue. <laughs> this is Shenmue. Tomb of the Fallen Gods. Based on Chen Dong's web novel of the same title. So, most of these posters are really shitty, except for this one. This girl's design is super cute, though. Moving on. This is Hey Men. Looks like a little sci-fi story. Maybe post-apocalyptic. Don't know. Says sci-fi. All right, moving it. That is a very bad use of CG. I highly recommend not doing that. Um, okay, moving on. This is Jidao Longshen. Didn't we already read Jidao Longshen? 
Nope. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Moving on. This is Sekai no Awari ni Shibu Inu To. Which is an adaption of Doomsday with my dog. <laughs> I love that. An apocalyptic event has transformed Earth into a desolate wasteland, leaving a young girl as the sole human survivor on her journey across this dystopian environment. It's not really dystopian <laughs> if everything is destroyed. She's followed by a quirky companion, a talking pet Shiba Inu. The eccentric dog named Haru has an arsenal of tricks up his sleeve, easing the solitude of travel with joyful antics. Whether it be sparking philosophical discussions or contesting with other dogs over love, Haru ensures that his owner's adventures is anything but uneventful. This sounds like there is a place for this that could be interesting, but I will be passing on it. This is, and now we're back to Chinese stuff. Kong Lan Jui. 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 This is, this is a cute angle. I feel like, I feel like I shit talk the Chinese shows so often that I have to occasionally say nice things about them. Uh, this is Shanghai Julun, Fairy Mountain. This is San Kun Renjian. Okay, this looks terrible. I've given compliments to everything else, but this legitimately looks like crap. If this was Japanese, I would still be in like, wow, this looks fucking terrible. Wow, this looks terrible, actually. They can't all have positives, I guess. Uh, Super Guido or Sunglasses Hitler? Oh, are you still trying to decide... Uh, flip a coin. Only way to do it. This is Jean Wu Kyung Kyung. There are many dynasties in the Yongjian continent. In order to strengthen the body and prolong life, isn't Yongjian actually a? Is it no? Hold on. Isn't Yongjian an old way to say China? No, I'm thinking of Qianxian. Yongjian doesn't mean anything. Qianxian is an old way to say China. Because I think it's like Kingdom of Heaven or something. Um, but Yongjian... Yongjian is, I guess, just made up for this. In order to strengthen the body and prolong life, the people here have always maintained the tradition of Jian Wu, fellow pr uh, practitioners. Once the practitioners reach the peak of martial arts, they ask about the Jian Dao, the young Su Yu, who suffered a severe attack at a young age, changed his name and changed his surname, but he was still in a hurry. But he was unexpectedly reborn back to his youth, foreseeing that the family is about to fall. In order to protect his family and relatives, Su Yu decided to work hard and practice the secret methods of Jian Men he learned in his previous life. I actually have an explanation for why Hitler having sunglasses is better than the original. Because it's cooler. Uh, which one's funnier? Sunglass Hitler, easily. By, like, a thousand percent. <laughs> uh, okay, next up we have Yang Guan Cafe Ting Zi Jin Yo Ji. Cute. She's cute. She's a cute girl. Looks like this is about coffee. This looks like a Chinese show about coffee. This is Baozo Zi Ri. Ri. This looks like hot garbage. Look at that. That is like animation from like the early 2000s. Summer Punch. You remember how Guido came back from the dead in Eternal Punishment as a ghost shadow thing? Uh-huh. This is Shi Xiao Ji Gun Jue Hao Gudan. I like the poster art, but I really doubt the show looks like this. This is Hiroshi Feels Lonely. So much Chinese stuff. This is Zingyon Zizu. Mal never should have added Chinese shows. This is why. He wore sunglasses, this is why. Oh, because of the black void eyes? This is Tuan Min Dei Shiming. Yup, moving on. This is Zhang Gao 
Kyanin. God, this looks like crap. Some of these Chinese shows look really good, and then some of them look like this. All right, we've moved on to OVAs. This is Sasaki to Miyano Koi ni Kizuku Mai no Choto Shita Hanashi. It's November, and a student who's lost his keychain comes to Miyano and his friends, who have taken over the disciplinary committee's workload. On a whim, Hanazawa proposes the establishment of the first lost and found detective agency, which goes out on a search party. That doesn't even sound good. That Nothing about that is in any way interesting. Okay, moving on. But do the shows themselves look that good? That See, that's what I'm assuming is the answer is no. Um, I have seen really good Chinese animation, so I know it exists. Um, and I think, like, a famous Japanese animator said that the Chinese have surpassed them in animation quality. I don't think that's true. Uh, especially not, like, the highest level of anime. Um, but they, it would be foolish to say that there are not very well animated good looking chinese shows that that would be that would be fool talk um but no i have to imagine that night honestly let's be clear here though like 99 percent of anime don't look as good as their poster either so <laughs> it's a lot easier to create a well-made poster than it is like a, a well-made anime this is our fuerte <sighs> Show Kogyo de Sekai Saikyo Maboroshi no Bokin to Kisuke Kiseki no Kaigo. This is Ara Fuerte Phantom Adventure and the Miraculous Encounter. Ara Fuerte is so unbelievably bad that if I were to create a list of top 10 worst Isekai series I have seen, it would be on it. It wouldn't be number one. Um, but it would be on it. Number one worst isekai series I've ever seen is Cautious Hero. Uh, let's see. After the capture, Hajime was worried about the farewell to Mui, to, to, to Mu, to Mui uh, that would occur when the trip resumed. Hajime and his friends were talking about the seven great legends of Ilsen as a memory before they left for the trip, but all of them were missed. However, in the final seventh adventure, he encounters a mysterious giant creature and is blown into a world of a devastated city. Hajime, who started to search for a, straw, for a stray Mew, fulfills his miraculous encounter there. I feel like that wasn't grammatically correct. Um, but I don't want to reread it to check to make sure. Alright, we've made it to movies. This is One Piece Film Red. Uta, the most beloved singer in the world, renowned for concealing her own identity when performing. Her voice has come to be described as otherworldly. Now, for the first time ever, Uta will herself to the world at a live concert. As the venue fills with all kinds of Uta fans, excited pirates with the Navy watching closely, and the Straw Hats led by Luffy, who simply came to enjoy her sonorous performance, the voice that the whole world has been waiting for is about to respond. The story begins with the shocking fact that she is Shanks's daughter. Dun, dun, dun! Okay, but is it canon, though? Yo, Shanks popped out a cutie, though. <laughs> um if you're wondering why i suddenly started laughing i said shanks popped out a cutie not sure how that works <laughs> no i have not seen i don't watch critical uh Let's see these, like, designs, though. Luffy. Luffy's... Uh, Luffy's as Luffy as ever. Um, Zoro's pretty cool. Zoro's pretty swag. Look at Zoro. Nami. Pretty good. Pretty good. Like that. A lot, a lot. Sort of like, um... Got more of, like, a goth flair vibe to it. That's nice. Uh, Usopp's being Usopp. Sanji's looking okay. It's got sort of, like, a punk vibe to it. Okay, all right. Choppers, choppers, choppering, chop, choppers, doctoring. Frankie looks like a nightmare. He looks like a Mad Max character. 
Uh, Robin, not, you know, I'm not really feeling the core set, honestly. Shanks, I don't think Shanks' outfit has changed in any way. Okay, I like Brooks, actually. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Uh, okay, Jinpei. Jinpei's looking good. I don't know who this guy is. Alright. Uh, maybe I'll check it out. I don't tend to watch the One Piece movies so much. Um, this is Eurocamp movie. I never watched the original Eurocamp. I hear it's great, but I didn't give a shit about it. <laughs> I hear it's really good, but I just, I don't want to watch a bunch of cute girls camp, is my thing. Uh, anime film will feature characters from the franchise now grown up and reuniting to construct a campsite. Aw, that's sweet. Sword Art Online Progressive. Kuraki Yuyami no Shrezo. This is the second progressive movie, which I forgot the first progressive movie ever came out. I'll have to check this out at some point. Not right now, but at some point I will check this out. This is Natsu A no Tunnel Sayonara no Deguchi. This is the official ad on the game's Facebook. All right. I'm going to... I'm going to mute my microphone. Because I don't... You know what? Luffy is really cool and powerful, because they always skills can hit all enemies. Generally, at the front of our role in the lineup, he has outstanding defense and attack. This is my lineup. I like all the characters. There are Solon and Ace. Ace can make me pass the customs faster in the early stage and fire any damage. It is very easy for him to obtain. Wow. <laughs> Wow, okay. Wow. <laughs> That's awful. I also uh, just want to point out that these characters are not made to scale. <laughs> she should be like half the screen. That's an official ad. That is crazy. Uh, whoever was in charge of that probably got fired. Uh, let's see. Kaoru Tono heard a rumor. The laws of space and time mean nothing to Urashima Tunnel. If you find it, walk through, and you'll find your heart's desire on the other side in exchange for years of your own life. Ooh. What, what, if, what if your desire is more years on your life? Woohoo! One night, Kaoru just so happens to find himself standing in front of a tunnel that looks suspiciously like the one in the rumor describes. He finds himself thinking of Karen, the sister he lost in an accident five years ago. To Kaoru's surprise, he's been followed by a new transfer student, Azuzu Hanaki, who promises to help him experiment with the mysterious tunnel. But what does she want from Kaoru in exchange, and what will he have to uh, left to give after the tunnel's done with him? Well, if it takes years of your life and they keep experimenting with a tunnel, won't they just inevitably die? Sounds like they're gonna inevitably die. Oh, I read this as this is Studio Clap. I read this as Clamp. I thought this was a Clamp show. Eh. If I hear good things, maybe I'll check it out. This is Surun Movie. Hajimari no Isha. This is a movie adaption of Surun Kazame Kokyo Kyudobu. Which is a Fall 28 anime. Dun, dun, dun. This is Bakuten, the movie. This is a follow-up anime for Bakuten, which I talked about in 2021. This is Cute Boys Do Gymnastics. Moving on. This is Ame Wo Suru Sugeru Hyoryu Danshi. Uh, Kosuke uh, Drifting Home. 
Kosuke and Natsumi have been friends since childhood, but as time goes on, the relationship between two sixth graders seems strained as they keep avoiding each other. One day, during the summer vacation, they visit a housing complex that is scheduled to be demolished. Having grown up there, the place holds a lot of memories, but while playing, they suddenly get caught up in a mysterious phenomenon. When they regain consciousness, they see an entire ocean before them, as the housing complex has drifted into a mysterious sea with Konsuke, Natsumi, and others in it. Will they be able to return to their previous world of summer farewell journey be Gens. Yeah, that doesn't really grab me. Okay, moving on. This is Legend of the Galactic Heroes Die Nui the Sak Sankubo. This is just the fourth season of Legend of the Galactic Heroes. Is this like a remake? This has got to be a remake, right? It's a remake. This is the fourth season of Legend of the Galactic Heroes' remake. This is Uda no Prince Sama movie Maji Loves Starish Tours which is the first installment of the new Uda no Prince Sama original film series, which I believe I read the description of at one point. I did, 2019, moving on. Oh God, we're almost at the end. This is Osumatsu-san Hippepo Zoku to Kagiyaku Kaijitsu. Kaijitsu. First two a new anime commemorating the anime sixth installment. Whatever. This is, a, this is so old. It's so old. Okay? It's been around forever. Okay, this is Gundam G no Recon Gusta movie four. Gekito ni Sakebebu Ai. Sakebu Ai. Which. 2021. I've read this all before. Moving on. This is. <laughs> Gundam G no Recon Gusta Movie 5 Shinsen wo Koite. This is the fifth and final film in the thing I just read. Moving on. There is no way both of these films are airing. It's probably they got announced. Uh, because there is no way that both of these are going to air in the same season. I do not believe this. Okay, this is Delicious Party equals, sorry, Delicious Party 3 Precure? Because it's 1, 2, 3. I think it's Delicious Party 3 Precure. Oh, no, it's Delicious Party Heart Precure. This is a Delicious Party Precure movie, which is uh, the 2020... 2022 Precure. I cannot believe Precure turned into this. This is like... <laughs> this is like a reverse Madoka. <laughs> Precure is the most baffling Magical Girl series ever created. Um, Chong Chu Dequi. We ain't got nothing going on here. Moving on. Oh, Rainbow Sea. Fly High. We're almost on the other side of this, everyone. Buckle your seatbelts. We're almost there. This is Dr. Stone Ryosei. The original episode will serve as a bridge between the second and third season. Oh, okay. Well, I'll watch it if I care about Dr. Stone when I get that far. Moving on. Ruby. Hyosetsu Taikoku. Ruby Ice Queendom. Let's not even front. I am going to watch this. I'm not even going to lie to you. I am going to watch this. In the world of Remnant, humans and faunus, human-animal hybrids, carry on their everyday lives despite the omnipresent threat of the monstrous Grimm. Dedicated huntsmen and huntresses battle Grimm with both customized weapons and their own semblances. Unique abilities derived from energy of one's soul. Some warriors also utilize a crystallized energy propellant, dust, to bestow their weapons with elemental properties. In this dangerous line of work, rigorous training is required to stay alive. To that end, each remnant's four kingdoms have established schools to properly groom children holding aspirations of becoming licensed huntsmen. At Beacon Academy in the Kingdom of Vale, a promising group of future huntresses make their debut as Team Ruby. Ruby Rose, Wei Shini, Blake Belladonna, and Yang Xiao Long. Each come from different backgrounds and often butt heads as a result. However, when they cooperate, they are formidable force who have even attracted the attention of Beacon's headmaster, Professor Ozpin. Along fellow students, such as those in Team Juniper, the young prodigy Ruby and her friends engage in adventures which pit them against extremist faunus group known as the White Fang. Every explosive encounter also brings them closer to the true villains orchestrating conflicts from the shadows, written by Mal Rewrite. 
I read a baffling review of this one where here's the thing. There is an all-star cast backing this, and Ruby is not an inherently bad idea as a series. There is a lot of potential. It just needs to be in the hand of someone competent. Um, Ruby has not been on track in a very long time. However, the manga adaption of the white trailer was actually good. So there is hope to make a functional Ruby series. It's not completely dead on arrival. It just needs a complete overhaul. So I am interested to see if this is a complete overhaul. But, like, there's a lot of big-name people behind this. Like, um, uh, Toshimasu Suzuki, um, uh, uh, to, uh, uh, Ubukata, um, we got some work from, uh, I think, Hyuke, and I think Genaribuchi worked on this also. Yeah, Hyuke, and I believe I saw on, um, ANN that, like, Genaribuchi is also working on this. Like, they got people from Shaft. They got the Shaft crew on this. They they actually put effort into this. So I'm willing to see how this turns out. But uh, yeah, Ruby uh, as the original web series is hot garbage. Again, a Rabucci. Uh, oh wait. Uh, it barely even talked about the show itself. It just said the show was uh, male-hating because the main characters are girls and the villains are guys. Again, Rabucci, tell me when someone is raped or violently killed or both at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, that's a really bad take, um, especially because it ignores a very important fact, which is that Miles Luna created the character of John Arc as a self-insert, and he will not let John Arc not be in every fucking episode and be the coolest guy. Like, he pushes John so hard. I know he's left the company, but, like, Team Juniper wasn't supposed to be main cast members. They were supposed to be, like, tertiary cast. Like, the third most important team. And then, <laughs> like, the story goes, when you read the listen to the director's commentary, fucking John was, like, loved so much by Miles and Carrie that they fucking pushed him to the moon. Like... Oh, shit. Yeah, no, it's... Ruby's not... <laughs> Ruby's in no way sexist, I'll say that. And then there's, like, Ozpin and all that shit. I... And then, like, Ren's a major character. I... <laughs> I understand where it comes from because Rooster Teeth went on this, like, whole, like, woke culture binge um, after season, like, four or five of Ruby. Like, they, they definitely went in that direction uh, in-house as far as the culture of the company itself went, but the show itself isn't, like, inherently sexist. I it, That doesn't really hold up. He was a self-insert when he was pushed over in season one. Yes, actually. <laughs> Make of that what you will, I guess. But yes. The idea, I imagine, is that it probably went realistically more like this, which is that Miles created the character of John, voiced John, and then he, John was supposed to be a character? Uh, and then he decided to add John more into the show, and then as John became more integrated with Miles as a person, I imagine what actually happened is that John started developing as a character because he, like, became more of a self-insert as time went on. I doubt he started wholeheartedly as Miles inserting himself into Ruby. I think that's probably what he just became at one point. Now, hilarious story about team ruby itself is that <laughs> the characters of ruby like the main four cast members uh their personalities were not based off of the voice actors however they were based off of what the series creator monty ohm thought of the voice actors so <laughs> if you watch any appreciable amount of content uh, content with these four women Absolutely none of this is correct, but <laughs> that they were based off of Monty's uh, like uh, 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 um, 
uh, preconceptions of them. Uh, ouch, gotta suck for... Uh, it's telling that my brother only ever watches season one or two. Ouch, gotta suck for them. Uh, I will say that Monty died before season three was released. So, I guess make it out what you will. But yeah, Blake being mysterious was just because Monty didn't fucking know anything about Aaron. <laughs> But yeah, they don't actually act any. <laughs> I I used to watch a lot of Rooster Teeth content, uh, and I kind of fell off. But uh, yeah, though they they don't act anything like that. Uh, I would say the closest is Yang. The the closest is Yang. Um, Dun Dungeon, e and I will say that Yang became more like Barbara. As time went on. Um, let's see. Dungeon ni dae wo motomeru no wa machigataru daru ka for episode zero. Special recapping all previous seasons of Don Machi with Bell Cranel and Hestia's VA to commentary. Yeah, I am never going to watch this. <laughs> I will never watch this. D4 DJ double mix. D4 DJ is an anime that came out a while ago. A special episode focusing on the story of Mermaid and Rondo. Uh, and weirdly enough, it got its own meme? Somehow? <laughs> Aside from Ruby, I never watched Rooster Teeth. I think the closest I watched to Rooster Teeth was Rocket Jump. Okay, so here's the thing, right? I was a huge Rooster Teeth fan. Uh, I've said this before, but Rooster Teeth's group Achievement Hunter was like one third of the reason I got into doing Let's Plays. Like, I would not be here doing this show without Rooster Teeth. Uh, and there's just no getting around that. I was a huge Rooster Teeth fan, not just Achievement Hunter, but I actually got into Rooster Teeth from Red vs. Blue, um, which is was a great show an absolutely great show uh i was a big fan of red versus blue and th so when ruby dropped i was a i was like subscribed and i watched rooster teeth before the red trailer dropped and i remember because i watched it day of release the red trailer i watched the trailers as it was coming out uh, I watched all of the trailers. I watched season one of Ruby as it came out. Uh, I listened to the panels from, like, RTX and uh, the like. Um, I listened to the director's commentary. I was into Ruby as it was dropping. I was very familiar. I was a big fan of the creator. Montiome was a personal hero of mine. I was super into Ruby as it was launching. And that's also part of the reason I be I'm so disappointed in where uh, uh uh so disappointed in where ruby went red versus blue aka dicking around in forge red versus blue is better than ruby ever was just straight up like seasons one through ten of Ru red versus blue are great absolutely amazing like top tier uh, um um content uh seasons 11 through 13 are a lot weaker uh and that is because bernie uh bernie burns was the creator of rooster teeth and red versus blue and he stepped down from working on it other than to just like voice church and he passed it over to miles luna that's correct the same miles luna that creates ruby uh and so he passed it over to miles who is not as good of a creator as bernie as you can imagine uh, um, but what I will say is that the ending to season 13 of Red vs. Blue is possibly the greatest ending to anything I have ever seen in my entire life. It is brilliant. And if Red vs. Blue ended at season 13 it would be the greatest ending to a series i have ever seen yes because i was gonna say what about a wari monogatari second season but then i remembered that they didn't end it there uh 
<laughs> so yes, if season 13 was the ending of Red vs. Blue, it would be the best ending to anything I've ever seen in my entire life. However, dot dot dot, they kept going for like, uh, god, fucking five more seasons, I think? <laughs> uh, doesn't matter, I stopped watching in season 15. It went real bad. Ruby to cross over with Justice League, an upcoming feature film from Rooster Teeth and Warner Brothers. I, God, everything about that I find horrifyingly disappointing. <laughs> I hate everything about that. <laughs> but yeah, uh, no, genuine recommendation. Red vs. Blue is great. Genuinely great, Okay. Uh, it's a quick watch. I want to get it on Blu-ray, but the Blu-rays are super expensive and rare now. But I want to get... I don't know why they stopped selling their fucking flagship. Um, but yeah, I want to get Red vs. Blue on Blu-ray. I want to... Just the first 13 seasons, because as far as I'm concerned, season 13 was the final season of that show. <laughs> this is like the Scooby-Doo crossovers with WWE. It's very weird, yeah. But yes, uh, very good show. Especially the first 10 seasons. Uh, I still go back to pieces of that show to this day. I've been wanting to... I've almost considered like doing a rewatch. Red vs. Blue is so good, dude. Um, and seasons 11 through 13 are a lot less good. But that ending will... The ending of 13 makes up for having to get from 11 to 13. I will say that. The ending is so good on 13. So my advice is Red vs. Blue, seasons 1 through 10... If you are satisfied, you can stop there. If you want a little more, go to season 13. It will be worth it. If you start 11, get to 13. And once you finish season 13, you are done. Do not go to 14. Do not go to 15. Do not go to 16. Don't go to 17. Don't go to 18. If you finish season 13 of Red vs. Blue, for the love of God, you are done with Red vs. Blue. You are done. You have finished. You wash your hands of that and you're like, what a good ass ending to a show. So glad they didn't continue to do this. <laughs> um, okay. Hey, Dagla, what's going on? You're hitting right at the end of the stream, I think. Uh, Bang Dream Morphonication. Two special episodes featuring a violin rock band, Morphonica. How are you doing tonight? Oh, God, I cannot talk anymore. <laughs> I'm blowing my voice out. What's my uptime? An hour? Oh, no, but I was probably going for like an hour before. That's probably, yeah, we were, so we're probably significantly over an hour. Oh, hey, Ursic, I didn't know you were still here. Uh, Midori no Makibao. Oranai Chosin. An adaption of the final episode of Midori no Makibao manga released with the Blu-ray box in 2022. I don't know what this is. What is this? This is an anime from 1997. Holy crap. eBay has red versus blue. Uh, Blu-ray is pretty cheap. It's most seasons... Uh, 10 and beyond, but I see earlier seasons. I They have a very special box set. I want I want to get the box set with the, like, 1 through 10. Hunt Monster as well. Uh, listening to Sack and Mal. Uh, Midori Maikabao is a small white racehorse compared to other thoroughbred horses. He looks like a donkey with wide nostrils. However, with his guts and speed as his weapon, Maikabao wins in every big race. In the beginning of his career, Maikabao had trouble making his debut as a racehorse because of his appearance and various disadvantages he had. But Maikabao had reasons to overcome his difficulties. There was a lifelong rival horse called Super Horse Cascade that Maikabao needed to defeat. Plus, he was determined to win back his mother a horse that had been taken away for pay back the debt on the farm i felt like either my brain or the writing messed up there there were many hardships that maki bao has to overcome but he thrives in the series of races to become a great horse horse uh source piero japanese oh god my voice is giving out i when i am done with this stream i have got to go eat I am hungry. I think I ate one meal the entire day. 
Uh, this is Tony Kaku Kawaii Seifuku. It's Tony Kawa over the moon for you. Uniform. This is a special episode of Tony Kawa Kawaii scheduled for uh, to be released in 2022. What a coincidence. I am actually watching this show right now. This is my uh, currently watched anime. What a what a what a fun little coincidence. Uh, I'll probably check it out at some point, but I'm not going to bother to add it. Because season two is coming out, and so when I go into season two, I'll deal with it then. Um, this is Yao Johan Time Machine Blues. Yao Johan Time Machine Blues takes place during the sweltering midsummer day when Ozu, the protagonist's terrible friend, accidentally drowns the only remote control for the air conditioning unit in their apartment. What weird-ass air conditioning unit has a remote control mine has buttons when they discuss their predicament with akashi the protagonist's raven-haired love interest a sloppily dressed time traveling student arrives from 25 years in the future prompting the protagonist to borrow his time machine in an effort to snatch the remote control from the past before it breaks uh this is a comedy mystery romance psychological time travel by shingo natsumi who why does that name sound familiar? Shingo Natsume, what have you done? Directed One Punch Man. Uh, did a lot of key animation. I pro I actually feel like I know him. I'm, this is going to sound crazy. I feel like I know him and not for directing One Punch Man. I feel like I know him for his key animation. I think he's a well-known animator. Um, directed Space Dandy. Wait! Nope. I, if he directed Space Dandy, then I know exactly why I know who this man is. Uh, directed Boogie Pop 2019. Directed Space Dandy Season 2. Uh, directed Aka 13. Did key animation for my second favorite anime, Shikibana Hime. Interesting. Did not know that. Um, directed the original Horisan de Miyamura. Uh, da, 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 da. key animation, key animation, key animation. Directed this thing. Yeah, I, I, I do know him as a direct. I think I know him as both a director and an animator. Uh, yeah, honestly, though, the... <laughs> Uh, plot line of a main character going back in time because they dropped their remote in water sounds actually good. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you. It just sounds actually good. It's also done by Science Saru, who I believe were the animators behind uh, Devilman Crybaby and um, uh, Izokin, which I only, know, I only know about Izokin because the intro is parodied by uh hollow birds but um ping pong the animation yeah uh so they're well known for their like animation qualities uh but i believe they also did the castlevania series so correct me if i'm wrong about that i'm pretty sure that is true oh oh we're done oh hey we're done we're done everyone Round of applause. We did it. We finished. Mission accomplished. I feel like this was a very light season, right? Am I wrong about this? I feel like I barely added anything. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I cannot believe this is getting an anime. This still baffles me. Nine... 10, 11, 12, 13, get 13. This is very light season. Fourteen. Fifteen. Fifteen across TV, movies, and OVAs. And web series. That's crazy, actually. Wow, this... I, I heard that this season wasn't very good, but Jesus, there's, like, nothing on. That is... That is crazy, actually. 
probably a few more like give or takes like uh we can make like 16 17 18 so probably closer to 20 but that's that's still very light for a season i i can see why people were complaining about this um anyway we did it uh everyone we sacked mel and we talked about uh fma finally being brought to its knees um Hopefully everyone had a good time. I need to not talk. I am blowing my voice out. I thought I wouldn't need tea tonight, uh, but I severely, severely underestimated how rough this was going to be on me, and that was my mistake. I went in way too hot. Uh, but anyway, hopefully everyone had a good time. Um, I did. Thanks for stopping by, everyone. I'm surprised that, first off, I'm surprised so many people stopped by, but I'm even more surprised so many people hang out, hung out for so long. I did a few more things I'll probably take forever to get to. Nice. What, anything notable? What'd you add? Did you get anything cool? Um, so, to best of my knowledge, podcast should be tomorrow, but I'm gonna be honest, don't hold your breath. <laughs> John will probably cancel again. But, anyway. Uh, just waiting for the reply to see what got added. Uh, but, yeah. You know what? I can probably just check, right? I can probably check with my own eyeballs. Shadow House. Oh, gotcha. I heard good things about it, which just does not interest me. Um, but yeah, okay, with that, I have been Sacrobolic. Oh, Eurocamp movie, because I like Eurocamp. Okay. And the tunnel thing, it looks like, right? Yeah, and the tunnel thing. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Natsui uh, no tunnel. Sayonara no Deguchi. Um, Hadaraku Mal. Euro Camp. And you also have Uzumaki on there. But I don't believe Uzumaki is coming out this year. I think it's already been delayed again. So, no, no way Uzumaki airs this season. Uh, but yeah, thanks for stopping by, everyone. Uh, hopefully, everyone had a good time. Um, I will see you probably tomorrow, even if the podcast gets canceled. You know what? I don't promise that. I don't promise that. I'm taking that back. But I, I'll, I'll see you soon. I'll see you within the next few days. My plan to watch list is getting bigger. Your plan to watch list is tiny baby stuff. Are you kidding me? I have like 700 things on my plan to watch list. That's what a plan to watch list looks like. All right, everyone. Bye-bye. Have a good night. I need to eat and not talk for the rest of the night.